<laughs> Hello, sweet bitches. That's right. The time has come once again. Ari Shafir's Eat Nature Box. This episode is brought to you by Legal Zoom. Legal Zoom is a way, a convenient way, to deal with a lot of your legal shit that you would normally have to go to a lawyer to. Deal with it online and deal with it naked. You could be drunk. Nobody could stop you. You could you could say after everything that you write lies. You could say that lies. <laughs> yeah. You could you could say <laughs> it's your call. Phil, yeah, you could you could curse the world. You could curse God Himself. You could as do whatever you like papers. as you're signing legal documents. You could be having sex and getting an LLC at the same time. No <laughs> yeah. one can stop you. You have ultimate freedom because this all exists in the virtual world. You don't have to worry about pulling your cock out at the lawyer's office. Like, what if you were cool with paying your wife divorce money, but you wanted to jerk off as you signed the yeah. check? Yeah, just to remind yourself of what a pathetic fucking fool you are. You get trapped in these terrible relationships that you wind up being financially committed to these people that you really never got along with ever for the rest of your fucking life. And so as you're writing that down, you just jerk off all over his desk. <laughs> I bet someone would want to do that. Someone would do it. Yeah. Can't do it. But. You can do it at home. You can get divorced at home while jerking off. No one can stop you. You can um, you can get a will for sixty nine bucks. You can uh, incorporate or form an LLC starting at ninety nine bucks. And uh, nine LLC, out of ten customers. LLC. Once you have LLC, you can do whatever the fuck you want to the environment. No one can sue you. you can just I dump don't shit, know. Punch people in the if face. That yeah. is totally LLC, true. It's like a diplomatic immunity. It's, it's like that. <laughs> it's a limited liability company. It's a limited liability. It's interesting. Probably should be illegal. But uh, if, if, if it exists, you yeah, should be. Yeah, they just do. called it. They're just like, no, 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 we can't, yeah. can't sue us. Yeah. yeah. Um, legal, nine out of ten people that have uh, used LegalZoom would recommend the service to family and friends. And uh, you get a special discount from listening to this podcast. Make sure you enter Rogan in the referral box at checkout for more savings. And LegalZoom is not a law firm, but they can connect you with a third-party attorney and provide you with self-help services. The third-part attorney thing is probably pretty important. Yeah, independent third-party attorney. So if you fucking freak out and you're like, this is illegal, I'm going to prison. You call the attorney and they calm down. They calm me down. Calm down, dude. You're going to be fine. Here's how you do it. 12 million, uh, 12 years rather, over 2 million Americans have used LegalZoom. That's... Um, that's awesome. So legal zoom, go there. People. Use the code word Rogan. Yeah, it's a lot of fucking people. It's like it's 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 annoying to have to go to a lawyer's office and do it on their time and you know, what if you work weird hours? When I worked at the law firm, they billed my hours at twenty five bucks an hour Bam! to the clients. When I did Xerox thing for twelve bucks an hour, they, they just, made they just rob bucks you. Off you. Lawyers <laughs> places rob you. Legalzoom.com. Use the code word Rogan. Du, 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 du. We're also brought to you by Nature Box. Nature Box is our, our latest sponsor. He's a good man. They send you delicious and uh, nutritious snacks. In are the these mail. really nutritious? They are better than sugar or heroin. Um, <laughs> it's uh, better than meth for sure. Yeah, they're healthy. I mean, it's what. Listen, it's they're snacks. They're carbohydrates. You know, there's like rice right. cakes. The, I had some rice sticks. They were good. They're delicious. No yeah. trans fats. Um, you know, it's uh, a lot more healthy than you know, some shit that you're going to get out of a fucking vending machine. And some of them are really delicious. Granola, the yeah. salted caramel pretzel pops, those are fucking really delicious. What are some of those that you have over there, Ari? Well, I got the Harvest Rice Dex, but I have to try. I'll save those, those for later. Here's one important thing. They Black have zero... Okay. They have zero... The excellent. Zero high fructose corn syrup. Nothing artificial. And the honey Dijon pretzel is very good, too. They're yummy. Yeah. And uh, it's it's better than, you know, people, you, you give in to temptation when you don't have options. When your only option is that vending machine that has candy bars in it, you, you go with one of that, and you, you feel like shit. And this is um, a way to get snacks that are that are yummy, and they're good for you. Then They're just, they're not total shit like most of the stuff, Cheetos and shit like that. Not that yeah. Cheetos aren't awesome. Yeah, pretty bad for you, though. Yep, not good. <laughs> I live next to a pink dot. I just go down there when I get hungry and high. I'm like, so fuck. I remember eating Cheetos uh, one time. You and I went to Pink Dot, and we were uh, we were eating subs. Remember these? They make subs. These uh -huh. have a... Uh, uh, they still got that. They still have that? Yeah, they do, and they're awful. Well, they were good at one point in Meatball time. Meatball subs, not bad. They, some of them were good. I, I had an Italian there that was pretty good. Yeah. But, uh, and I ate all these fucking... 
Cheetos. I must have ate like a giant bag of Cheetos, and I felt so bad. My body was like, what (laughs) did you do? I did that last night. (laughs) For just a little bit of mouth pleasure, you fucking ruined the whole body for hours and hours. Cheetos, you can taste a lack of nutrition. Your whole body just like... What's in what's this that you just shoved in the machine, you <laughs> asshole? <laughs> Cheese puffs. Oh, really what? This up. is unleaded. It says unleaded. This is not the shit you're supposed to put in here. I know, but mouth pleasure. Well, these are good for you, and they're not going to give you that feeling. Uh, just healthy things like granola, uh, dark cocoa almonds, which are delicious, and uh, Nature Box ships for free. Just like nature does. I don't know what they mean by that. Nature does not ship for free. I try and try and try to understand what the fuck they mean. Nature ships for free. No, you have to go to nature and pick it up. It doesn't ship. Even if you live in nature, (laughs) it still doesn't come to you. The only way nature ships for free is if you're talking about pollen. Oh, yeah. I guess Um, pollen flies through the air. In that sense. Are there any pollen products on nature's nature's box? I don't think we sell pollen. Hmm. I don't think you're selling pollen over (laughs) nature (laughs) box. Yeah, birds. Yeah, you guys got to get rid of that part. Nature box ships for free. <laughs> just say it ships for free. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Someone wrote it, and they just shouldn't. They should have said, "Ah, that's ridiculous." Nature's box. They just we forgot. For they, they probably oh, just <laughs> left it on there, and no one said anything, and it got past a bunch of people that weren't that stringent. Yeah, and they let it slide. Na- nature doesn't ship for free, son. That shit's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, doesn't make any sense. Nature's blocks were never on our period. <laughs> what you saying? <laughs> Nature's blocks uh, were nature's never. Nature's box where we're never on our period. I don't even or think you unlike said box. Nature, you said we never oh, yeah, our box. Our <laughs> yeah. box, you're oh, saying? Like, oh, all right. There has nature to be better box. than ships for free. Yeah. We're never on our period. <laughs> yeah, now I get it. Now I get it. That means you're <laughs> always <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> okay. Nature's, yeah, nature's box. You can come in us. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Shoot one in there. <clears throat> um, don't box, use don't worry about those it. Shoot slogans. One in there. <laughs> nature box, if you're listening to me. <laughs> Don't worry I'm about the it. Most sober shoot one, one here. in there. You don't want to use these slogans. <laughs> Not you bad. Don't. Nature box, sh- shoot one in there. These whole wheat apple picky bars are delicious. And they can't get you pregnant. Nature's box, <laughs> shoot one in there. <laughs> right now, your first order of Nature Box, get 50% off it by going to naturebox.com slash Rogan. That's naturebox.com slash Rogan. Uh, get a handle on your health and your <laughs> hunger. Go to naturebox.com slash Rogan. And hey, shit went in there. <laughs> that's not Go her- ahead. That's not herpes. That's lemon tea biscuits. Don't worry about it, bitch. Walk it off. <laughs> Walk it off at Naturebox. We're also brought to you by Onnit.com. O N N I T. <laughs> if you haven't been to Onnit in a while, we, we've added a lot of things, continue to add things that uh, mostly just things that we find that are beneficial. Uh, the idea of on it is a human optimization website. What that means is we sell strength and conditioning equipment and supplements and protein powder, hemp protein powder. We just sell things that we find that we find that are beneficial. Um, these kettlebells that we have made, we have uh, artistic te- kettlebells too, the zombie bells and the primal bells. And what they are is kettlebells that look badass. They look like they're sculptures. They're made by this kid, Steven, this kid, these young kids these days with their artistic talent. Young, the this ones? man, he might not be a kid. I don't even know his age. His age. Uh, Steven Shubin Jr., he created the uh, primal bell. Yeah, the monkey one and the apes. And then he also did the new ones, which are zombie bells. They're all balanced out. Because one of the things about uh, kettlebells is it's all about swinging this uh, ball, this heavy uh, steel ball. And it's all about balancing it and controlling it. And if the ball was off, like with these faces, it could easily be off. So we had them, uh, part of the artwork is that it's a, they had to be 3D mapped to make sure that they still are uh, kettlebells that you could train with with no problems. I train with my gorilla all the time, and it, it's uh, you can work out with it just like a regular kettlebell. You just have to be th- cognizant of where the head is facing, but you should know that anyway, and you'd be fine. But uh, I train with them. They're they're really like my favorite all time exercise for uh, strength and conditioning. And I, I don't even mean if you're an athlete. If you're an athlete, they're fantastic. I mean, they're really g- great for uh, also for educating your body to work as one unit. You know, carrying a heavy kettle, heavy kettlebell and doing things like cleans and presses and things along those lines. Um, but it's also – they're great for regular life. They're great for just being able to pick up a couch and, and help move it. They're great for it's, – it's better to have a body that works a little better, a body that can be strong, a body that doesn't break when you try to bring home groceries. Get your shit together, bitch. 
That's what I'm trying to say. I like how the little bitch one is a, a goblin. It's not even a zombie. The little one is a goblin? Is, is that what they're saying? Yeah, it says it's a brain, brain zoblin. Brain zoblin? <laughs> brain zoblin? What does it say? Brain, brain goblin? goblin? I think it's a... I think that's still a zombie, dude. A goblin is not, not a zombie. But they, should have, they should have one that's shaped like, looks like, like a, a pretty girl going to work. Yeah, it's... I mean, this doesn't look like a ghost face thriller. <laughs> it's just a like funny name. But doesn't it look <laughs> like a zombie to you? That looks like a zombie. That doesn't look like a ghost. <laughs> no, no ghost. There's no ghost there. That's yeah. solid mass. Yeah, that's mad. I see, can't see through that shit. Yeah, yeah that ain't ghost like. It's Frankensteinish, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's a zombie, dude. <laughs> that's not a goblin. Oh, wait. Zombies <laughs> are the ones that... No, that... Yeah, it's definitely not a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> what? It, well, can't ghosts look like anything? Uh, you, Who's you to see, say? You can see through a ghost. Though. You know what's fucked up, man? Yeah. It's really fucked up what they've done with vampires. What do you mean? They've given new rules to, like, vampires. Oh, really? You can go out in the sun as long as Seattle, you mean? Well, two people did it. It, did, it happened twice. Once it happened with Blade, which I forgave. It was ridiculous, why was but I allowed to li- Why was he a daywalker? He's a half vampire. He was born. His mom was, uh, like, born. bitten, that, uh-huh. and he was born, and he became half vampire. Okay. Not, like, totally vampire, some weird sort of hybrid thing. But, uh, so... Steven Dorff was the main vampire dude, and he could go outside with sunscreen on. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. It's so, dumb. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> That's the worst. No, you can't. No, you better have magic or something. You can't just fucking put sunscreen on. You're a vampire, man. You fl- you burn instantly. It was the some ashes. Studio exec. So like, hey, we wrote this yes. part. Like, but he's outside during the day. Like, we'll figure it out, writer. I don't remember so that from the that. comic book either because Blade was a, a favorite comic book of mine. I was always a big Marvel oh, really? comic book fan. I love Blade. I don't even remember it as a comic book. Oh, he was awesome. He'd fight fucking uh, fight vampires and shit. He oh, used a teak those. knife in those uh, in all those books. It was cool when he showed up at that party. Dude, he was cool too. Look, man, I know I was supposed to fight that guy, but I'm a Wesley Snipes fan. I, I think he was awesome. Is, the, still, is he's, he still in prison? No, he's out now. He's back doing movies again. He uh, he was awesome in Blade. Yeah. Apparently, he was completely crazy by the time Blade Two. I guess <laughs> by the time Blade Two. dot com. <laughs> Rogan. Use the code word Rogan. This is we're obviously doing a podcast. <laughs> when, fuck the music, man. Ari Shafir's here. We don't have to do this. <laughs> yeah. Nice. The um. By the time he was doing like Blade Two or Three, apparently he was off the handle. Pat Oswalt has uh, wrote a whole blog entry about it. On meeting him, describing info? it, describing it. And he might have performed it somewhere. He he might have performed it. I'm not sure. But I remember hearing about it, I think. Holy shit, it was crazy. It was like Ryan O'Neal and him and and apparently uh this was Wesley was like he was gone. He was you know just off the deep end crazy on the set. <laughs> and so they replaced him with what Patton called much cooler black guys. So they replaced him with another guy to film like did some the, of the did scenes. The scenes did the, uh, yeah, did like the martial arts scenes? stuff and huh? yeah. <laughs> Cuz I couldn't deal with him. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened. Wasn't he already sort of a movie star? He went crazy in between there and there? Yeah, I think probably some substances were involved. Oh, yeah. You know? It's always that. It's usually. It's always yeah. that. Yeah. Then you see them like taking whatever, and you're like, oh, oh, oh. It's also, oh, I, uh. I don't think we can imagine what it's like to be that famous. I think for some people, it's just, and then you get hooked up with the wrong people in your life, and you're fucking around with the wrong friends and getting in trouble. And so many that. of them. Elvis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a it's a dr- well, the the nature of the business. Like, if you're a fucking your person who's in the limelight that heavily, like the nature of the business becomes very bizarre. You know, the, the nature of your reality, you're getting around. Yeah, everyone treats you like a like a like a commodity. Well, we were talking about Justin Bieber, like how Justin Bieber, the the kids, like everywhere he goes, people fucking freak out just to see him. Like, oh, he's yeah. like a, some weird alien. You know, we we can't imagine what the fuck. I just that's sort of feel like. bad for him now. It's sort of, in a way, I mean, it's not an ideal way to live. It seems awesome. Like, don't feel bad. He's got all this money. But yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a crazy, like, burden to throw on somebody. Brent Tobler told me he got into an elevator with Jessica Simpson. And she, she turns to the woman she's with. She goes, he's not supposed to be in here. <laughs> As if, like, what? another human. Yeah, he was just going up to whatever his room was he was in. No way. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what, though? The... Like, how do you start expecting that? This I is would... wrong. It is totally wrong. But... In her defense, to be her as a woman and be super duper, super famous, yeah, she must be, be so vulnerable. It must be weird 
to the opportunity to for a guy to get in an elevator with her. Like men want to fuck her. She's not used to it. So much. There's so many men who like and a guy who knows that he could probably physically take advantage of her and can't <laughs> believe that he's in her presence in a trapped environment like an elevator. Right. If he's a really creep, you know. He would go to town. He could. He would ravage her. It would be horrible. I mean, that, you're much more vulnerable as a woman if you're that super famous. If So you think she puts in a rider when she goes to a hotel? It's like, okay, but you got to let him know. No one can ride with me. <laughs> no, you can't do that. She might have rules that her security like oh, right. follows. The security details. Her security, you know, she might like have rules. Like She doesn't want security to let anybody in the hotel you know, lobby with her or won't let anybody <laughs> in the elevator with her. I don't right know. Path. She might. But it's like... People don't have to listen to those. Yeah, but how do you stay normal after that? After no one's allowed to be in the elevator with you. Well, here's the thing about like you and I is that we're we're stand up comedians, and by being a stand up comedian, you're all the time forced to look at everything. Interact. You look at yourself. You look at yourself. You look at like what you're saying. You look at the world around you. You like looking for jokes and things. You're looking for jokes in yourself. You're looking for jokes in your own life. A lot of people don't do that ever. So oh, right. they're not thinking. They're yeah. not ever thinking about their behavior. They're just doing what they can get away with, and they're acting as fucking Looney Tunes off the deep end <laughs> as they can get away with. As as they continue to get away with more and more Looney Tune they shit, get, they get worse and worse. Well, that's what the whole diva thing is all about, man. I mean, she has so much power to yell and scream at people. Like, yeah, why? Why do you? Why is that? What's going on there? They said Roseanne every year, every more year she got, she had her show. They were just firing more showrunners. <laughs> she just, was on the podcast talking about it. Really? Yeah, just she was like talking getting about rid of people. It. Well, she talked about how crazy she went. <laughs> really? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty open about it. You know, I mean, she's essentially saying what you're saying. She's saying that nobody can handle it. It's just too... Uh, One after another, they all fall. It's too hard. Just to be, but there's no way he's normal. No way. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> he was just trying to rush people. Like, dude, you're scrawny, he's man. so young, too, you know, for him to be so young and to yeah. have that happen to him. It's a fucking wild ride, man. That's not a normal ride of life. You're not a man yet. You're a child and you're adored. Yeah. That's not supposed to happen that way. You're supposed to feel insecure. You can see how they become that, that King Joffrey. Oh, yeah, exactly. It definitely. Exactly, exactly. I mean, he's not. You were raised in that? I'm sure he's not. I'm it, sure a lot yeah. of it is exaggerated. He seems like a nice kid. I met him once. I shook his hand in his dad's hand at the UFC. Really? Yeah, I mean, he seems like a nice Did kid. tremble? What do I know? I didn't know who he tremble was. His, oh, I didn't know who yeah. he was until I was shaking his hand. Like, as I was shaking his hand, I was like, that's not a singer, kid. Did, this was uh, a while ago, but he's much more famous now than even he was then. Oh. Like, he's like in some crazy stratosphere of fame thing now. But... I think yeah, all of us. Does he just exude fame where you're like, Jesus. Like, no, 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 it? no, no. He was just a nice kid. Just came over and said, I realized as I was shaking his hand that it was Justin Bieber. But like I said, this was like two years ago. Probably two. Maybe, it might even be three. But nice, you know, it's nice is all well and good. But Canadian, man. Being able to handle that kind of fame, I couldn't imagine how yeah. anybody could not Elvis it. <laughs> There's no way. It seems like. There's no way. It seems like your your reality is just so bizarre. Yeah, if you're just entitled to something, you were just like, all right, I'll just take it. Yeah. Do you think they're just picking on him to a point where, like, I mean, they're like making news stories of him peeing in a mop bucket? In a, oh yeah. You know, what I mean, they're 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 making news stories of him being a 21 year old egging his neighbor's house. Oh yeah. You know? well, I mean, but hold on, like, I yeah, think whatever. that was You're real. To do that. No, no, no. But th- it is real. But I mean, when I was 21, <laughs> it's like right. That's what I said. We all did that. We all did. Yeah. <laughs> We're not any better right. than that. But a 21 year old that's got 500 million dollars or whatever he's got, you know, that becomes more yeah, interesting. People get to mad people. at him. And they get mad at him. You pee in a bucket. You have that much money. What's he's got to pee? Well, it's also the the, the house, the egging the house thing. I kind of disagree. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that being a story. I think that's a real important story. Yeah, I agree. But he got caught. But it's like that is the worst. Like all these other things are just. It's like Miley Cyrus. Like, well, yeah, you're 19 and slutting it up. Yeah, Yeah, you're from the fucking south. Of course, (laughs) that's perfect. On on target. I bet you if you were hanging out with him, it would be just like hanging out with your friends. Oh, you want to smoke weed? Oh, dude, let's get a little fast in the car. Oh, let's do this. And and then you, yeah. 
of all those things that you've did, they've made stories out of all these little minor details and made it like every time you go on TMZ, it's something stupid. Like Bieber did this. He flicked off. There was smoke coming out of his car. Well, he becomes the show. See, the problem is like when, when you, you step out like that and you're driving a chrome car and, right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and you're, I mean, he's, <laughs> what he's doing is he's stepping out. He's racing Lamborghinis in Miami and he's getting fucked up here and he's getting fucked up there and he's having fun. He's having a great time. I bet he's having a great time. He's doing the best I've ever imagined a 19-year-old kid could do. could do with a half a billion dollars. Jesus. He's doing great. Like, leave him alone, His man. dad's around him all the time, right? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so I, he was... Negative stories. Who knows? He's like, I'm just trying to make good music, dude. What the fuck should I do? He's having a blast is what he's having. But, boy, he's on a crazy rocket ship ride. There's he's no way like, he doesn't implode. He's strapped. To the to the head of like a missile and shot through the sky <laughs> and it's like wow the the fucking you know the, the ride they is very fast and very exciting yeah but the landing oh yeah what is the landing gonna be like they are you gonna... trying to make him out like a uh, like a virgin anymore well how are you gonna keep this I mean how long are you gonna keep balling how long can you keep balling that hard <laughs> yeah. He's got a chrome car. He's 19. He's got a chrome car. He's throwing eggs at his fucking neighbor's house. Shirley Temple retired at 21. Whoa. Yeah. She was like, I'm getting out of the business. I'm living off residuals. Whoa. She lived a normal life. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like 10 years, nobody even fucking bothered her. Wow. Huh. That might be the move. That might be the move. <laughs> just like, cool, I did it. Now I'm good. I'm set on this. Let me just... uh. Work on my painting. I don't know, man. You know, as uh, as you see more and more instances of people that get that super stratosphere fame and it's more and more Michael drug. Jacksons, you know. Michael Jackson, to me, is the f most yeah. fascinating character study on human beings that I've ever witnessed. Because I think he is... He never went down and fainted. Well, I guess sort of, but not well, really. He, he kind of did and then didn't. And, you know, he's sort of, sort of still in the mix because people didn't want to believe that he was a child molester. Nobody wanted to believe it. Dude, that guy, it became a fucking freak. He became... A monster. He became a monster. He turned into a monster. He became a monster. turned him into a monster. He became this white-skinned vampire-like guy with alien eyes. Pig nose. He had his, yeah, he had his eyes worked on to the point where his eyes were like really big and wide. It was weird. He had a yeah. bunch of weird shit done to his face. He had a dimple put in. And, and then he, he played the Super Bowl like that. And he, de and he de denied ever having anything done. Denied did he really? it all. Yes, yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> what? He denied having anything done. Like, I went to have, to have my nose fixed, but that was because something went wrong. And then he pretended to have a baby with somebody? Yeah. What was yeah, that? And about? the came, kids came out white. With one of the, with one of the, with Elvis's daughter? Did they well, say he they lived, had a baby with her? He, well, no, 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 no. He didn't have a baby with her, but uh, he had uh, with this one woman. Supposedly, she was pregnant with his kids. And yeah. the kids came out totally white. Totally white. Completely white. Like, it's one of the weirdest things ever. And I guess you're supposed to, just, I don't know what you're supposed to question. You're supposed to keep believing in him. I don't know. I, the guy. Do you remember when he was going through that, when he was doing the interview in Vegas, and he was going through that, like, statue store? Yes. And he was like, I totally well, remember that. you know, the fame is pretty nice. I'll have two of those, please. And uh, yeah. and this guy behind him just leering, just like, all right, that's $200,000. Yeah. All right, yep, that one's $150,000 each. Yeah. He's just tattling it up. He just keeps going, yeah, doing the interview. And yeah. Order and shit, just walking through. It was kind of like a cry for help, man. Sort of. That video was kind of like a cry for help. What did that kid say? This is that guy that's uh, saying that Michael Jackson molested him when he was a kid, and now he's like trying to get money out of the state, and hmm. the state's saying, you waited too long, too bad. Oh, really? <laughs> he said it's not his money anymore, it's our money. Yeah. What do you think, though, man? You know, there's also the possibility that he didn't molest kids, and that, or he... No, there's the, nothing I know about the world that would say that that's a realistic possibility. But yeah, it was. Could it be that people were trying to take advantage of a, a guy that's just fucking really weird? Yeah, maybe. That's that's and why. Sad. That's the only way people aren't like at his door with pitchforks. Is there's a possibility? Well, he's dead. People just I don't made think it up. Be at his door today. Yeah, no, no, no. He died the weirdest death ever. Yeah. The guy who's taking this. I mean, he's getting put under every night. And that's how he's going to. That's how went to jail. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine you take it to the next level? You go to sleep? You're getting anesthetized. <laughs> just, just tuck yourself in, man. I mean, You'll be okay. How about sleeping pills? 
It's no. not strong enough, bitch. <laughs> I need something more. I got nightmares. Well, uh, I just think if you just, uh, Michael, if you just lay your head down, just count sheep for a little bit, it could probably work. <laughs> well, that shows me you're not listening to me. I'm just <laughs> saying, try it without the stuff. Yeah, he wasn't willing. He wasn't even willing to endure that. Nope. No, nope, we're not going to be staying up another night. <laughs> Put me under. Anesthetize me. And the doctor was so crazy. He just did it. He was getting paid so much. He fucking Doctors just conked people. him out every night. Oh. But it, it, I guess that's super bad for you. I guess you're not supposed to. Uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to cut anesthetize out. Anesthetize yourself <laughs> like every, <gas> night. every night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it seems like uh, that would be a no brainer. Like, <laughs> do you sleep? Yeah, so not really. Sort of. You're just out. I'm, yeah, I've been put, <laughs> I wake more refreshed. Well, isn't that like side effect of that particular type of anesthesia? What, it's death? like that. No, <laughs> no, you uh, you wake up and you feel refreshed. It's like there's some sort of a trick to it. Oh, really? Oh, after like 30 minutes? I kind of remember reading that. I should probably pull it up. I think there was a particular type of anesthesia that he when was When I got into. put out at Eddie Bravo's class, I felt so refreshed afterwards. That's different. <laughs> Really? Yeah, you wake up, and I was like, when he was like, yeah, you can get back in there. I was like, can I really? I just felt like, I felt like rested. I felt like I napped for thirty minutes. Wow. So his anesthesia. Do you guys remember what it was called? No. What do you mean? The type uh, they gave him to him? Yeah. It was, uh... What? The anesthesia that they 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 got him with. Okay, propofol. Oh yeah. Propofol. Propofol. So we'll look at propofol's benefits. Propofol. That's so scary. <laughs> yeah. Doing it even once. I can't go to sleep. What else you got? That's so crazy. Uh, but to, the I idea. I have a meeting at 10 a.m. We got to go to sleep. The idea that someone could get that far gone. They get that far gone where they just need to be put out. Do you think there were other doctors who were like, Michael, I can't do that? They're like, get the fuck out of here. <sighs> I guess. And so the guy, the doctor was like, all right, I guess I'll do it. I guess this doctor thought he was going to be able to keep him alive. And if he kept him alive, he would be still pulling money out of Michael for mm -hmm. a long time. I mean, that's the only reason why it makes any sense that anybody would agree to do this. It's because they need money. Yeah. Or they want the money. It's a, I mean, there's a reason why it's not legal. It's not ethical. It's scary. It's scary that you can get a doctor to agree to just put you under every night. <laughs> it's a good oath. It's so crazy. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to jail. find the disadvantages. Disadvantages of going to sleep every night by my, by the gas. Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm just the disadvantages of uh, of using it. Yeah. Let me hear them. It's just. Uh, by the way, I'll be in Chicago at Zany's oh, this oh, weekend. Powerful Chicago Zany's small club. Cool place. Yeah, I've never been. It's supposed to be one of the best clubs in the country. I've never been either. Really? Yeah, it's supposed to be one of those small ones, right? Yeah, it's real small. I think it's like less than 200 seats. Yeah. I think it's jammed, though. I'm doing three shows on Saturday and oh, two shows on Sunday. I love it. I <laughs> yeah. love Chicago. Chicago is Cool incredible. vibe. Oh, the best. There's something fantastic about that town. I mean, this is a mess right now as far as crime, especially... With um, young uh, urban kids, like the gang warfare. Really? And all that shit. In yeah, Chicago? It's horrible, horrible like, gang fighting and, and, and murders. A lot. A oh, lot of that going on. That's unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that shit going on. It's uh, It's got one of the highest murder rates in the country. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, when I was there. I barely um, ever played there. You never played there? I know, I have, but do, I barely. Did you ever do it with me? I just did it with you at the Chicago oh, right. Theater. <laughs> Fuck my ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was like a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. It'll be all different material if you come out. With me. I'm not going to repeat any of that stuff. Um, derf. <laughs> there's um, there's a type, a type of person that comes from the Midwest. You know, they're like they're, uh -huh. they're like grounded, genuine in the sort. Yeah, there's sort of a genuine grounded quality. Like there's a lot, a lot of hardworking people, a lot of people that have worked on farms, a lot of people that have families that worked on yeah. farms, people that came over here, their relatives came over here a long ass time ago. You know what I saw there once though? I saw it was one of the early days I went there with you and there was this they put us in a, like a, a VIP area at those nightclubs. And some girl was flirting and then she came in and sat with us. I was like, "Yeah, hey, yeah, sure. Yes, come on in." And then as soon as she went in, some girl behind the rope bumped her and she just gave her this look like excuse me you need to keep out of here this is my area right now <laughs> she just took it over what do you mean she kicked a girl out of yeah she was like so confused she just got invited into some vip area and then right. immediately started acting like she was better than everyone else 
It's the first time I saw oh. that in girl behavior. Oh, I see where you're. Like she was somehow the queen all of a sudden. Yeah, people can be cunty. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. I definitely explained that the, the least. You're, you might way. be too high to talk right That's now. That's possible. <laughs> My <laughs> tolerance went down in New York. Might want to slow your roll. Yeah, the New York thing is a bummer, huh? Yeah. It's so it's such a horrible way to live. They hang, for folks who don't know. All right. I mean, I'm not saying this like uh, this is the way you have to live. I'm just letting you know. In Los Angeles, it is unbelievably, ridiculously easy to procure <sighs> marijuana. Yeah, you just it, pull over. Yeah. It's essentially legal. It's essentially legal. Yeah. Um, if you have a medical license, it's legal. If you a don't have license a medical is just a license, to jump through. If you don't have a medical license, it's decriminalized. Right. So uh, that's one of the things that Arnold did when he left office. So as long as you're not smoking weed and driving like an asshole, yeah. it's it's pretty fucking legal. I yeah. Mean, you yeah. do it. You're doing it in the privacy of your own home. Cops don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. I had a cop in my window giving me a lecture about texting. With a half smoked bowl, like in the middle, and yeah. he's leaning in for like two minutes. They don't care. They don't care. They know the, what what people are concerned with, especially police officers, is people that are fucking dangerous. Yeah. That's what they're concerned with. If you see a guy texting, that's dangerous. Oh yeah. You know, if you if you see a guy and his van looks like Cheech and Chong, that guy's probably driven really fucking slow <laughs> well, yeah. as the smoke <laughs> leaves his cracked window. That guy's going to be, uh, he's probably going to be really scared to merge, but other than that. <laughs> in Maryland, I couldn't figure, even with my friend, we wanted to smoke pot, but we couldn't do it at our, each other's parents' house, so we had to like, just get in the car. Like, yeah. They got no other options. But then your car smells like weed. Yeah. That's the problem. If You, you got to make that choice. You make that choice to smoke in your car, your car's always going to smell like weed. No, just for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Unless you close the doors right when you finish smoking. You get one of those pot-smoking dogs, come there a <laughs> month later, you'd be like, bow, bow, bow. <laughs> it smells like weed. I found weed in my car on the way to the airport this time that was in there, like in the center console for maybe a year or two. I, was I just, it? I didn't try it yet. I just, uh, I was on the way to the airport. I always wonder if, I know edibles lose their, their potency. They do. Yeah, they go away. It goes away, like almost entirely. It gets to the point where they don't do anything. Oh. But they only have like a certain lot. Ty McCormick explained it to me once, but I don't remember. I gave Tony some weed that was in the back of my fridge for like three years once. I was like, <laughs> if you want it, you can have it. And, and, he, it? and he goes, yeah, I got me high as fuck. Wow. Yeah. Well, I guess maybe the dried plants, it's different than when you the, you cook it. It's like the cooking aspect of it, I think, or the, the putting yeah, it maybe. into an edible form. Something about like- Spiciness like goes away if you leave the top like off that. too long. Does it really? Yeah. Like of what? If you like, let's say you have a thing of like that, um, the red sauce, not the sriracha sauce, but the but the ones with all the, the seeds in them. You ever see those? Oh, the spreadable yeah. Spreadable kind. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. If you about. take the top off that and just let it like oxygenate, is that a lot scientific? Of the spiciness goes away. <laughs> no, fuck, really? no, it's just really? observation. Really? Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know. You're the one who turned me on to that fucking shit. What is that stuff that you gave me? That bomb? It's a bomb? Oh, oh it's so good. In the, in oh, the, my in the God. Thing of spaghetti. He gave me this hot sauce that l it looks like it's so like small. If you were like, uh, it even has like a nuclear warning sign on it. It has <laughs> yeah. like a like a little nuclear sign on it, and it's such a small bottle. You're like, what? It, what? What? How horrific could this stuff possibly be? <laughs> Everyone like, always like terrifying. Oh. It's such a small bottle. Like, how are they so confident to sell me that much hot sauce? Is it just that one pepper that whatever the, the ghost pepper? Yeah, ghost pepper. I don't know if it's ghost pepper. It might be that caspicum uh, capsation. Caspic, capsation. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's find out. See the the bomb. D A. D A. B O M B. Oh, you got hot it. Hot sauce. Habanero peppers. Is what yeah. It that's it. No, that's not it. That's a different one. There's a a there's death three one. Of them there. The black one. There's the there's oh, this, the, the little one, tiny yeah. death one. Whatever the little tiny death one is. That one. The final answer. What is that? Is it bomb dropping in the middle? Right? No, the that's. Bomb. Is that it? <laughs> but literally three drops into a plate of spaghetti and marinara sauce. Three drops and then mix up the whole thing. Is that the same sauce? It looks different. Oh, I guess they have a bunch of different flavors. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, a few different flavors. Okay, this is it. That's the it. bomb beyond insanity. That's it. This is the one. See this one right here? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, well, whatever. Whatever the fuck the name of this stuff is, I, could, <laughs> I, I got cocky. And Did I you put, really? Yeah, yeah. I put like a half a teaspoon of that shit in, and I uh, I took your <laughs> suggestions. What? I think it was uh, no, it was either spaghetti or it was uh, chicken noodle soup from uh, Jerry's Famous Deli. You took my suggestion, what, and doubled it? 
I took your suggestion and put it in the spaghetti. You told oh, me to okay, put yeah, it in spaghetti. Yeah. It, I put it in noodles. I'm pre- actually, I'm pretty sure that it was the chicken noodle soup because I get that all the time. Uh-huh. Um, but holy <laughs> fuck, I was in agony. Yeah. I was like, this is the most ridiculous <laughs> hot sauce of all time. It's got a good flavor to it, though. It does, but it was. I went to war. Yeah. <laughs> I went to <laughs> war with my under body. Under the eyes. <laughs> Shit it out. It says habanero pepper enhanced with habanero infused flavor create a sauce measured at 119,700 Scoville units of heat. Wow. Wicked to give you beyond context, belief. To give you context, a jalapeno pepper is 2,500. That is insane. 119,700 Scoville <laughs> units of heat. It's so hot. <laughs> I did the same thing on a plate of spaghetti. I took like a whole teaspoon, ate one bite, fought on the ground for a while, dumped the whole thing back into the whole like tub of spaghetti, and then all that was hot. I didn't think that it was. Um, I didn't think it was just habanero. It seemed so strong. I felt like it had to be more than habanero. There's voodoo in there. There's some <laughs> so, sort of voodoo in there. I've yeah, had really good, really good habanero sauce, mm-hmm. and you know, real strong stuff. But it was nothing like that. Yeah, that was so <laughs> off the deep end. It's so good. You ever have El Yucateca? Uh huh. That's my. They shit. They said that at the griddle. That's my shit. Those the Mexicans know how to make the best hot sauce. Period, dude. Yeah. Their habanero sauce, is, that El Yucateca, it's delicious. It's hot, but it's also really delicious. Like I put a lot of that shit on my eggs. And it's it's got a lot of heat, but it's still the taste is so mm-hmm. good, you know. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. It's a lot about the taste. Yeah, the taste. It's the pain, but it goes with the good taste. Yeah, you don't want to just suffer like an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> I love when you. Do you ever get challenged when you put a bunch of hot sauce on something? People are like drink this whole thing then. Drink this whole thing yeah, in Tabasco, and you're like, why? I'm, not, I'm not trying to win a challenge. Yeah, what? Come on. It's like your dad, if he catches you smoking a cigarette, wants you to smoke the whole pack. <laughs> Listen, bitch, I just want to try cigarettes. You have to fucking stuff them in my face. Yeah, smoke the whole pack. Did you hear about CVS? What happened with CVS? Oh, they're not going to sell cigarettes anymore. Not going to sell tobacco products at I all. I think yeah. it's weird that they did anyway. Or how they sell alcohol. Yeah. They sell alcohol, and it's supposed to be a place to get medicine. Yeah, this is what I thought. <laughs> I've, I'm, for the longest time, I was blaming all these Philip Morris. Like, oh, they know it's addictive. They're still fucking putting it out there. But then you're like, oh, what about the people hold, selling it? Yeah. They know, too. They've read yeah. the stats. They're just making money off it. They could easily do what the CVS is doing. It's so weird. Especially in <sighs> pharmacies. Well, it's weird, man, because there's part of me that says, hey, I want to be able to buy cigarettes if I was an idiot. If I was an idiot and I decided to start smoking cigarettes, I'd want to be able to buy them. I don't give a fuck if CVS sells them. You know, if CVS wants to keep keep selling them. So, right. I get it if you don't want to make them illegal, but some health place does not have to sell the fucking agents of death. That is kind of creepy that it's a CVS. Yeah. Think about it that way. Yeah, because they have have tequila, they have Mm -hmm. alcohol, and then they have medicine on the next side. Yeah. That just (laughs) makes no sense at all. I mentioned on Twitter and all these people like, oh, they still sell candy, they still do this. I'm like, guys, it's a good thing. It gives people less, like, direct access, easy access to a harmful product. It's just good. And somebody's like, well, they're just going to get all this this business from the um, uh, insurance companies now. And it's like, yeah, they should get they should get rewarded. They when should get do, rewarded. Yeah, when you do a good thing, it's nice when those people get rewarded. It's not doesn't make it bad. The idea that you could just sell things that you know are going to kill you people, know it's pretty. How, yeah, how up. are they not held liable? I mean, it's not even something that gets you. There's something about there's a willingness when you decide you're going to drink. You know, yeah. like when you, like when if we're at a comedy club, like you want to do shots. All right, yes. we're doing shots. There's this thing that happens when you decide that you're going to drink that. Is beneficial. There's some. There's camaraderie in it. There's like fun in yeah. it. You know. There's there's happiness to it. Uh-huh. It's, there's a warmth. If you're doing it right, you know you can enjoy the experience of having a couple of drinks. But the experience of smoking cigarettes is just death. <laughs> it's I mean, that's nice. All it no, is. it's nice when you're getting a good it's circle so of people. Good. Yeah, but it's not changing your your fucking state. I mean, no. it might be giving you a little bit of a stimulation, right? It gives you a stimulant sort of effect, right? Yeah. That's no, what they well, say. Like, it's, 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 it's a friendly thing. That's when it hurt me the most is not smoke. When you see like Freddie Saw, like a bunch right. of people just in a circle, just all. I'm like, I want to be part of that right, social right. circle. Right, Yeah, there's a thing that people do. Like, people like to do that with cigars. They like to sit around cigars and smoke with Get a bunch together. of guys. Yeah. yeah. Now it's really weird because all the comics are using these things. So mm-hmm. you just yeah. see circles of people using these fake <laughs> electronic hookahs. Well, those are better what for do you, think you of those? man. Those are fucking better for you. That um, shit is better for you than, than cigarettes, yeah, period. Yeah. This is great for me for it doesn't. When it, 
like for chain smoking mm-hmm. or when I'm inside. Because like chain smoking is thing I would do. I wouldn't even think about. It. I'd be like working and I'd be smoking, put it out. I'm like, wait, where's my? Oh, I already put it out. I got smoking out. You know what I mean? So that's good for like the in betweens and when I'm driving and traffic. Big Jay's been like a two pack a day smoker for like years and years, and he's already he's gone like 120 days. The good just thing, on those. Yeah, the good thing about they help people quit. The good thing about this is besides like the blue cigarettes and like those little. Uh, disposable nicotine ones is uh-huh. those like you have you don't get any kind of satisfaction from that oh really and this you actually like, you that one it. looks too much though it looks too big like you're calling <laughs> attention to yourself you call attention ones I can to see. yourself yeah, it's a, what is that it's a whole device <laughs> it's a bunch of smoke though. it's and curved to the top it's not even straight on no no you, it, you can, it <laughs> you're around. angry you're Joey Diaz it's just too much attention it's just too big why is it too much attention because it's God it's like look at this thing I'm doing I'm doing something different everyone look is yeah. that what it is, or is it? Is there any uh, the, benefit? The ones that look the same size as, as I get that. All right, a blue tip mm-hmm. goes off. I'll tell you fine. what. I'll tell you. You mean like a, uh, a oil in there? Blue cigs. Like, yeah, the those blue cigs. Yeah. The difference is, is this battery lasts a long time and it has a lot of juice in it. It looks so. like an electric toothbrush. Yeah. It does look like an electric <laughs> yeah. toothbrush. It looks like one of those things that they uh, they put in your ear to it look has, around. It has a oh, read, yeah. It has a readout also. It tells you your temperature, and it also tells you how many hits you've had, and it also says like what your battery life. You have really? A alarm wow. clock on there. That is a trip. Let me see that thing. And, and what's really cool is that they have these bars now in Los Angeles that are huge bars, and yeah. they're like mixology bars. So you go in, and you're like, yeah, I want cotton candy, but Pez? And they'll go, okay. And they oh, make, and like, make cotton- it of those? Yeah, and it's like these, like, it's almost going to like a bar. Okay, Ari. You're you're wrong. What? This, this thing's dope. <laughs> Take a hit of it. I'm, you wear I'm fanny packs. At it. I do wear fanny packs. I, so I say, sell say fanny kind packs. Of stuff. Do you really? I'm selling them now. At higher primate. I got a beautiful one from <laughs> Roots that, with a higher nice. primate logo on it. With Boots? Roots. You know, Roots, the company that makes bags. Uh-huh. They make leather bags. Yeah, oh, they, they made me one <laughs> with a higher primate logo on it. Well, th- I got it from Dice. Dice yeah. came in and he had uh, he had sweatpants on and these <laughs> this fanny pack and I'll go that's a beautiful fanny pack I'm like where'd you get that he's like oh yeah it's from Roots it's the best and he showed me the fanny pack <laughs> so and, the and so I got the I got the Dice Clay uh, the fanny pack I that my my fanny that's you can get one I'll get you deal. one my fanny pack is a Dice Clay inspired I just huh. ordered some sweatpants online I'm waiting to get them and I'm just gonna start wearing sweatpants no they're not. Pack. Yes, do I not am. do that. Yeah, I am. No. No, yeah. do it, do it, do it. I'm going to wear track suits. No, they're, don't they're do that. I agree. No, stop it. <laughs> no, he, he's got to Why not? I agree with this. Why not? They, so, they're comfortable. They I'm have, not worried about that look. They have those new sweatpants, too, that look like pants. Have you mm. seen these things? You cannot yeah. go out like that. That's ridiculous. You cannot go out like that. If you're wearing like sweatpants, that. you got to wear sweatpants. You know, that's you're full. <laughs> you can't put fucking racing stripes on a Cadillac. That's just stupid. Yeah, you exactly. know, that's dumb. If you get <laughs> oh, if you're gonna is. wear Tights. sweatpants, they're sweatpants. Make them look like sweatpants. You have a crease in it, makes it look like a tuxedo. I'm gonna start wearing track suits. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please do not. I cannot sit with you if you do that. <laughs> you can. You'll be fine. Oh, these are. You'll be fine. I supported you through your cardigan days. I never said a word. I never shit on your fucking terrible dress habits. I never did. How dare you say that you wouldn't support me for athletic wear? That's just preposterous. If you're doing athletics, I can see it. Well, I'm an athletic guy. I like to move around. <laughs> you just break out into a, I need, into a uh, role. I need some moment. clothes that don't hold me down. See, these are sweatpants, but they they look like regular pants. Oh, that's nice. I would wear those. See, look at that. I'd wear those. Yeah, I actually would love to wear those. Yeah. That's actually it seems like something that I would those wear. Those do every not day. look like sweatpants. You're yeah. looking at right at his cock, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you can't help it. I looked at it. I looked at it for a full three or four seconds. This is Joe, and he's going to be wearing Cookie Monster sweat. That's me. Badger soft and <laughs> Beautiful. It'll be covered with cat hair. Show you how much of a beta I am. <laughs> I'm all for the track suits. I think that needs to make a comeback. I hate it's making a comeback. Jeans. I hate wearing jeans. Man, uh. jeans suck. We're so concerned with what kind of clothes we wear. People who are like really into style, they're always annoying. <laughs> they're what almost always annoying when they start talking to you about this is uh, this is Gucci, this is Fendi, yeah. this is a uh, uh, this is a Ralph Lauren. This My is artist a, friends told me that all, there's all these older artists now they're getting a little successful and they have like sleeves, but they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I only wear these type of shoes. There's like, nothing wrong with being into clothes. There's nothing wrong with enjoying. I think art clothes are artwork. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but there's people that are like really like obsessively into style and like kind of snobbish about it. That's like a weird thing to give a fuck about. You yeah. give a fuck that this guy has paint on his pants? Like, if you, you and I are hanging out and you have paint on your pants, I could give zero fucks. Is that, like, a better thing? Whatever you want. No, I'm just saying if you you choose to wear oh, a right. type of shoe or you choose to wear... Like, I make fun of Callum's shoes like all Portland. the time. In Portland, you can wear anything you want. You should be able to wear anything you want everywhere. 
But so, someone who's like into like rigid style, like, oh, that's out of style. That's out of style. Says fucking who? <laughs> I don't know. Says man. fucking who? You tell me what the hell board decides what's in style and not in style. Wear whatever the fuck you want. If you want to wear some sweatpants, wear some fucking sweatpants. And anyone who cares is an idiot. You, f- you fool. You care that that guy's walking around in sweatpants? Why do you give a fuck? Why would anybody care even slightly that someone's walking around wearing sweatpants? In the office? In the, in the, the, the boardroom? What do you give a fuck? Well, you have to wear that weird, stupid outfit that you wear with these stiff corners, these sharp edges, and a tie around your neck, and, a f- and cuff links that are so fucking stupid, I you have to suit. stick some metal extraneous pieces in there and tighten up. It's better without the buttons. Links, because your collar folds over. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. That's ridiculous. With your shiny, stupid, hard-soled shoes. Why do you have wood in your shoes? <laughs> the bottom of your shoe is wood? Really? There's wood in your shoe? What is it, fucking 1812? Are you are you living in Denmark? You have clogs on, you fuckhead? It's ridiculous. Why would you have leather, shiny leather on the bottom of your toes? Do you know how slippery and stupid that is? <laughs> it's got them at all. What's with the tassels, you fucking halfwit? <laughs> they put tassels you like on tassels in the front of your shoes, you <laughs> idiot? Like that. Man tassels. What is that, extra fancy, you fucking they're tard? Leather, they're leather tassels. It's so childish and silly and ancient. <laughs> retarded and dumb de dumb de dumb who cares how you dress you know i dressed all summer long in new york i would put on flip-flops shorts no shirt and just get high and walk around isn't it, is that cool to walk around with no shirt no it's not no i mean it's, it's allowed but it's even homeless illegal. people don't do it but it's not illegal uh-uh hmm I mean, What's, no cop could, what me. about women then? Is that can women walk around topless? Do I, they, they I know rules. that's been fought for, right? In Columbus, Ohio, you can. Portland, you can be you can be topless. I think it's a little really, in Portland. Oh. Yeah, these <laughs> tassels. Yeah, tassels. Oh my god, yeah. that's a fucking... style, man. It's tassels on top of tassels. It oh looks my like a saddle. God, you need ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you wear tassels in your shoes, you need ayahuasca. You need <laughs> I've had shoes like that. Shop mother shoes. ayahuasca to take you away. <laughs> have you ever done that stuff? Ayahuasca? Yeah. Still have not. Yeah, me neither. It's um a more um prolonged version of a DMT trip that apparently doesn't quite get to that DMT flash level. Really? But it gives you sort of this weird spiritual insight thing that you don't necessarily get with DMT. That's the way it's been described to me by my friends who've done it. It's hard, like, when you're trying to relay experiences, um, everybody's is very different. So, like, if you haven't personally experienced it, it's hard to try to put into context what they're saying, like yeah. how they're describing something. You oh, really yeah. have to it's experience it. hard to put into it. words. So one of these days I'll have to do it. But um, the DMT flash everybody that I've talked to or I've tried to like piece together what they say about their experiences. Yeah. It's all seems like we're all similar. talking about a similar place, but it's hard to, it's so wanky that it's hard to uh, put into like any context on in the the real world. So the words that you use are all the wrong words. That's what I talk about talking about God and the voice of God. You're like, there's no voice. It's not like that. There's no arm of, yeah. of God. It's, there's nothing that we can comprehend. If this is, if it isn't, you know, when you when you do that, if it isn't you actually communicating with something, if it's all happening inside your head and it's all imaginary, yeah, you goddamn, your brain has some untapped potential. Oh yeah, probably. If that's in there, if that really is just our collective minds in there, or really is just the 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 the, the depth yeah. of the p- potential of human thought and the, your ability to hallucinate or imagine things or your imagination in itself, the, the, the very mechanics of your imagination creating all these crazy illusions. And if that is the case, like, wow, you know, what an incredible potential the human mind has just on its own that just we get to every now and again. And it puts on this bizarre show of this, this godlike quality, like yeah. this, this perfect idealistic utopian loving thought process that hits you when you're on that stuff like of course people think it's god i mean maybe it is god and maybe what god is is human potential it's its greatest heights that's just what god really is yeah it's just a concept and maybe we're just getting you know too much of it when you have a psychedelic experience it's too much whatever the fuck you know that you're tapping into that gives you these insights i've seen it once but i've never done it Ayahuasca? What? No. 
The other stuff. DMT. DMT. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure we can make that happen if you were uh, willing to uh, sign a few pieces of paper for the government <laughs> and participate in the study. You should get in on the Rick Strassman studies. What's the Rick see Strassman if he's, studies? He's doing it again. What's he do? Um, he's the guy that wrote that book, uh, DMT, the spirit molecule. He was the first guy that was able to, um, secure federal, uh, funding for funding. research. Yeah. Well, he's got a license to be able to do it. I don't know if they funded it Wait. or if they allowed him to do it, but they, uh, they allowed him to do intravenous DMT, uh, injections. Intravenous. People. Yeah. The book's called DMT, the spirit molecule. And it's a fantastic book. Um, it's really interesting. He's a you know he's a scientist and he's a Strassman. Say, I would uh, donate my body to science. He's for a that. brilliant, brilliant guy, but he's also like a really cool guy, and uh, he's he's really nice. He's a really like nice person. And when you hear about his uh, relaying of these people's experiences, the way he set everything up, and his uh, his willingness to track this idea down and try to see what it really is all about, is really courageous. You know, for a doctor to do that, they, they you can get in. Some Trouble. weird, we get in some weird situations where people think you're a kook, but he's dealing with a real chemical. Yeah. So uh, they can't get funding to study mushrooms. Or the, or the they're starting to do it. Maps is starting to break some boundaries on that. They're starting to uh, to make some headway. Really? You know? Yeah. What's there was Maps? a John Hopkins University study yeah. on psilocybin. Um, Maps is the something multidisciplinary psychedelic studies. I don't know what the actual uh, acronym how it works, but it's. Um, the, probably the number one group as far as like really intelligently debating and promoting psychedelics. Oh, wow. And the study of psychedelics, all brilliant, brilliant guys. Um, you know, we had Rick Doblin, who's one of the guys uh, from MAPS, one of the, the head guys. We had him on the podcast, and the guy couldn't have been cooler. I told my suburban friend to take mushrooms. She, Did you? She's about to turn 40. Whoa. She was trying to figure out. Burbs. She was like, oh, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. I was like, do it. Do it with your husband. Tell her to take mushrooms take and some. listen to that U2 song. Actually, watch it. Watch it in the, the YouTube Kimmel. video. The one, Fallon from Fallon. Fallon, yeah. Yeah. Do you think when you get through a certain age, though, that it might be too scary to recommend somebody? To you sure you don't have herpes? I'm going to take a she hit. Said, yeah. She said, I'll be scared. I'm like, yeah, of course you'll be scared. Yeah, but I mean, like, when you get to a certain age, you kind of also have that, like, I'm going to die. <laughs> no. You're, you're, <laughs> oh, God. It's a big hit. Oh. What kind of flavor is this? This is that's grape mixed with a little bit of. Uh, You're a fucking child. Pina colada. <laughs> You're a black child. I didn't get anything. Yeah, you have to hold the button the whole time. You kind of, you can kind of like, like puff on it almost. That's kind of the way to do it best. Hmm. It's puffing on it. How'd you get the desk watch symbol in there? Uh, it's the sticker fit it perfect. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's hilarious. But, you know, like when you're older, you, you kind of have like in the back of your head like, oh, you know, what if I'm having a heart attack because I'm 40, you know, like because I, I, I want to I recommend it to somebody that's never done it the same way. But I just tell them like, that's, like, that's a ridiculous that, notion. She's never done anything like that. before. Yeah, tell her. Like, you know what, scary. man? You should let people do what they want to do. Yeah. If they want to live their whole life and never do mushrooms, you should let them. I'm not going to force them to do it. No, shouldn't even bring it up. Them. Shouldn't even bring it up. No, no, disagree. No. <laughs> Absolutely bring it up. <laughs> you think you should offer it up? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, I think if you want to fuck her, you should. No, even, no. <laughs> even if I don't. I advise my male friends, too. I try to get them to do it. Do you really? Yeah. 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 Um, not I with me. The last I thing think I want to you... do if I'm going to try to fuck a girl is do mushrooms with them. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, it makes wow. it weird. Yeah. And what if you freak out in front of her? You ruin yeah, all Yeah, then I'll feel like I can't. Life. So then I'll feel like like held down. Nah, no way. That's awesome. <laughs> uh -uh. Yeah, I think uh, anything you do, whether it's mushrooms or smoke pot. I was having a conversation with a buddy of mine last night about a, a friend of ours. And we were talking about like how this dude could benefit from weed. Yeah. Like this is why he does this because he doesn't smoke pot, smoke pot. So he's not, he's not doesn't have that paranoid introspective thing that you get when you smoke weed. We start really examining yourself. Yeah. You know, and, we're, and uncomfortable lights. People, oh, yeah. a lot of people don't smoke weed who need to. That's like the quality that they're lacking. So they have like this hubris. So they can so keep I pushing forward. Like, no, you really do. So they keep pushing forward without considering, you know, how they come off to other people. They just keep pushing forward. Yeah. They have yeah. This, this hubris. that You're would, like, come on, man, just smoke this and stop and think about yourself yeah. for a second. People get caught up also. You get caught up in going in a certain direction. Like, like, did you see Wolf of Wall Street? No, not yet. Good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I, I really heard. enjoyed it. It's really good. You know, a lot of people say that Martin Scorsese, like, his movies are kind of, like, formulaic. Yeah. 
But I say those people can go fuck themselves. Because uh, what he does is he knows, call him. he knows how to do it, man. I should. I'm sorry. <laughs> So good with words. He <laughs> for my next fifteen hundred words that I don't need. Here's a picture. Boom. Um, he just knows how to make a movie that like it's different. Like he'll do things like like there's a part when Leonardo DiCaprio like you know everyone's moving and talking and they just stop talking but they're. There's no sound coming out, but he's walking towards the camera and looking at you. Yeah. They've essentially completely cut out the sound of all the other people, and he's talking to you. It's like these weird little things yeah. that he does. Like there's the chaos of the trading room floor, and as Leonardo DiCaprio walks through it, it's, there's no sound, just him talking. Oh, yeah. and he's explaining his life That's and the world that he lived in. the director does. Yeah. Like he's saying something about something. He's just that. dope. He's just dope. Yeah. Martin Scorsese is just a master. He's just a they master. He said he had this shot in... Um, uh, taxi driver, where it's when you see a, a, a guy walking towards the camera, a character walking towards the camera, and then you see another angle like cut right from there to camera moving towards something. You're like, that's the point of view of the guy we just saw. Right. Um, so then they start having him pan across. That view starts panning across the taxi place all the way around and around, and then it, sh it then it puts De Niro in the shot. It was supposed to be his point of view, and all of a sudden he's in it. And he just does stuff like that. To yeah. Like say he, this shooting is just as crazy as this character is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Gives you that the deeper shit. Gets you feeling loopy. Yeah. This just a, there's such an art to filmmaking. You know. I don't have any desire to ever do it. No. But I, it seems like a lot of work. Oh my god. It seems like so much work. But I appreciate the shit out of it. You know. I really, really appreciate someone who's really good at it. Someone who just really knows how to make a movie that you go to see and you go fucking hey. That's a good guy. American Hustle's a good yeah, goddamn that. fucking I just saw movie. That. That's pretty good. That's a good fucking movie, man. That is a good fucking movie, man. I Christian Bale is such a bad motherfucker. Yeah, he's pretty good at God everything. damn, he's good. Yeah. Do you and ever the, see The Machinist? And those women were fucking fantastic, too. The chick from The Hunger Games. Oh, and yeah. The, the redheaded chick. Adams. God damn. Fantastic. You see it, Brian? What a movie. No. Bradley Cooper was awesome. You yeah. haven't seen it yet? I don't see movies unless I have a girlfriend. I just never think about oh, it. Yeah, I know what you mean. I get ladies, that you hear that cry for help? <laughs> <laughs> don't let another season go by without Brian. Without Brian, Brian Redband <laughs> finding a girlfriend. Next. I, I live a totally yeah. different life when I'm in a relationship. Like when I'm not in a relationship, I don't do shit. I don't watch TV. I don't watch don't, movies. I don't. What do you do? Play with dogs. You just don't do anything? <laughs> Furious masturbation <laughs> from the jump. The alarm clock goes off, the <laughs> go, lube gets go, squirted, go. <laughs> and we begin the race. <laughs> <laughs> I if that's what it was. Could See be. how many times you can masturbate in a day. What do you think you get to? Probably like three or four. To orgasm. High, no, you could do more than that in a day. You high, started right away. Yeah, oh, highest boy. is about five or six for me, I would say. You get this. You can get to seven to ten, I think. Yeah, but by the end, what the fuck is? What kind of madness? It's mostly just liquid. Like I would be liquid. afraid of that madness filling my head with seeds. What do you mean? Like if I beat up? off seven times in a day, yeah. what with the things that I need to think of in order to come after times five and six? Oh, yeah. What are the the madness? The fucking crazy. Savage genes that I have to tap into you to get my slow. last load you off. Start off slow to give yourself more room. I don't want those thoughts. Start off by like smelling your wife's pillow. I don't want those thoughts. And then Ari. move up from there. I don't want those thoughts. I don't want. I don't want to hit cum number seven. That's 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 a person I don't like. It would like. start to hurt, but you have to keep going. I don't like that person. <laughs> I'm just gonna fucking figure out how to come, 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 come. Nothing about dead cats. I'm fucking fuck the world. I'm gonna get these fucking loads out of the last. You go from it being sensual <laughs> to being a violent release of soldiers. That's how you orgasm. <sighs> Thinking about just an angry release of demon soldiers flying out of your dick. <laughs> Fight! <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Those boner pills make me masturbate a lot more. Really? I'm yeah. sure. You what do you take them and then strike out? And then you're like, oh, well. well no, they just last. With this boner. They last for like 24 to 48 Have hours. Have you ever looked wow. up like what happens if you hours. take that stuff a lot? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you never even looked into it, huh? No, I, I get Dude, pretty I nervous, Dude, I went off Propecia. Yeah. What's that? Uh, yeah. Proscar, whatever it was. That they you should take be that off that stuff. I read a bunch of side effects, and it was like d d depression, all stuff that maybe, I don't know, I think maybe it's stuff was caused by that. I think... Uh, Is that hair shit? Yeah, yeah. I had a bad reaction to that stuff. It killed my boners. They had boneritis in there, too. It killed my boners, and it also made me... Um, uh, it made me more tired. 
Oh, really? Like, when I would work out, I didn't have as much endurance. Yeah. When I got off of it, my boners came back with a vengeance, and I felt like I had more energy training. And I was like, man, I wonder if that's affecting me in an extreme way. Like, everybody has, like, a different reaction. It ch- changes the way it, f- it processes um, uh, testosterone. Mm-hmm. So the, yeah, dihydrotestosterone. You see, but everybody has a different body's reaction. It's so weird, you know? Like, some people, they, they're aller- allergic to certain types of uh, antibiotics, or they're allergic to penicillin, or they're allergic to, you know, people get yeah. weird rolls of the dice with your bodies. Is it might be that my body didn't react to it very well, but I know uh, I have a buddy who's on it. There's no problems with it at all. Yeah. He's been taking that shit for like ten years. Probably most people don't. Yeah, for me it was a problem, but I didn't realize it was a problem until after I stopped taking it. When I stopped taking, like I ran out of it, and all of a sudden my dick was like woken up from a coma. Yeah, you know, I just commit to going bald. <laughs> <laughs> just shave like, your head, Hello. Man. Hello. You, your head was, you looked great when you shaved your head. No, I did oh, here not. Here we go. Yeah, you did. I did not like the shaved head. Well, well, you don't have to, but I'm telling you, you look great with a shaved head. We're all going to have shaved heads in five years. Listen, <laughs> there's a reason why the monks did it. It's an I don't give a fuck move. <laughs> I mean, I was, I, for me, it was a matter of aesthetics. My hair was getting so gross. It was, it was got down to the point where, like, you shouldn't keep getting haircuts if every time you get your hair cut, your hair still looks like shit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, like, what, what am I paying you chop for? Chop all this shit off. But I would have done it now that I've done it. Yeah. Now that I've done it, I would have done it a long ass time ago. It's the easiest way to deal with it. Like you got a round head. Yeah, it works. I got a good head for for being bald. But getting your like haircut is so annoying. Having to schedule that time out of your day and sit down and listen to some nonsense. I had a a cool hairdresser for a long time, my friend Gabriella. So she was a hairdresser from the news radio days. She really? Was, yeah, she's really cool. Cool Italian lady from uh, New York. So we, we've been friends for a long time. So I used to actually enjoy, she probably kept me from cutting my hair off for a long time. Just because I enjoyed hanging out with her. Oh. I'd go to see her like once a month. They're the really coolest talk. ones, man, on a shoot. Yeah. They're the wardrobe stylist, the wardrobe yeah. and the hairstylist are the f- only cool she's ones. She's funny. She's a funny New York, like hard ass, uh, cool lady. The makeup people always hate me because of you, Joe, because you, know, you always had that rule of, like, I never put makeup on, like, on TV shows and yeah. stuff. And so about twice I've had to say, no, no no makeup. I don't do that. And they're like, what are you talking about? You have to. And I'm like, no. I, you I, don't I, have to. <laughs> they tried to get me the other day when I was doing Fox Sports 1. I go, nope. They're like, yeah, we're just going to put a little powder. I'm like, nah, no. that's no. all right, though. They're like, this is what I look like. Yeah. This is exactly what I look like. That's what they said. I just want to play games you. and pretend I look different than I look. That's crazy. Like, you're going to smooth my skin out? What are you going to do? I let them do what they want. You're going to light me funny and salt like I'm an angel. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What the fuck are you I'm doing? Uplighting. This is look, man. Uh, no one's perfect. This is what I look like. What do you look like? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Let's talk now. <laughs> Fucking relax. You don't have to put makeup on people. She got mad though. She got upset. Like, look, this is my job. If you don't get makeup, they're gonna stop hiring me. Uh, you know what? <laughs> people are still gonna want makeup. So there's nothing wrong with makeup. Right. I wore makeup every day when I was on news radio. Really? Yeah. They've been make every time we filmed, they put makeup on me. Yeah, they just so want to do it, I, and I couldn't say no. Then you know who was I? They would anything I did to be a dick. What like, I was totally replaceable. I was totally replaceable. Did I was you replace nobody. Ray Romano on that show? Yeah, so I, he, re- I repla- actually replaced the guy who replaced Ray Romano. So they took Ray Romano was booked for the pilot, but they mm-hmm. didn't shoot the pilot with Ray Romano. No, this is what happened. Yes. Ray Romano was booked for the pilot, and he was working, but. They decided somewhere in the middle of Ray's They weren't happy thing. with what's happening. I don't know if they weren't happy with him or they decided to go a different way with the character and he Kevin was Christie right for their with, original with idea. Like, sometimes just last minute, like, we got to make a switch. Um, you, you're out. Let's get well, a in there. the beginning when they're coming up with ideas and they're throwing the ideas around for a pilot, it's not uncommon for them to change a character. They, like, decide they need a different dynamic. They have okay. all these different dynamics and Ray was more of a laid-back sort of a dynamic. Like, that's who he is. You know, well, when you see him on the show, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's like a laid back sort of a guy. And I think they wanted someone who's a little aggressive. Someone who is an idiot, who's like a, a male idiot that was going to do aggressive, stupid shit that leaves room for funny. So I got lucky. It was like, yeah. I, I came along after Ray was replaced by uh, another guy. Who did they just have a fill-in for the guy? Did, he never well, he really... was in the pilot. The other guy was in the pilot. But he didn't think he had a job, full-time job. I right? don't know what he thought. I don't know. I don't know uh, if, the, if I maybe he was... I pilot with another fixer guy. Yeah, maybe if he was really good, they would have kept him, or maybe if he was what they were looking for, they would have kept him. So then they did... Um... You know what's the funny thing about the audition? Yeah. Is that the first stuff that they wrote, it was, it was really interesting because um, it wasn't that funny. It was like more like matter-of-factly or it was more like setting up a character. 
You know, it was yeah. like there was no the, the the jokes in them were very subtle. It was like a a, a behavior sort of a, a piece. And uh, a lot of guys like totally like tried to overdo it and try to make it like really funny. It just wasn't really funny. And right. they were saying they did that. The writers did that because they wanted to make sure that no one would try to ham it up. Oh, really? Like if it's funny, it's funny. You know, like say it to make it funny. Like you know how to say it to make it funny or not. But if it's not funny, don't pretend it is. You, know, you can't ham- – everything doesn't oh, have right. to be a joke. Like some things are not a joke and some things are a joke just because you're creating a character. Like the, you know that character. So when the character does like typical things like that, that character would. It was like a joke of recognition. Right. You know? Yeah. So then the second time I came in for the second audition. When I see a penny on the ground near Barris's feet, I'll always go pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> I won't call Ted. I'll just pick it up and like put it in my pocket and let him go like, oh my God, I just saw it. Well, you guys have like routines. Yeah, that you yeah do. I'm saying. We like, have yeah. that go-to things. Yeah. Based on what you know already. But the second time I went in for the audition, yeah. they wrote something really funny. I was like, whoa, this is hilarious. It was really good stuff. So then, you know, they, they had narrowed it down to a group of people that they thought were, you know, not going to ham it up. Yeah. And then they gave uh, the smallest group, the, the remaining group, shit to be funny with. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So they, they were super Who super else was close for it? Class. I don't know. I don't know those guys. Oh. There was just a couple guys. But I remember, th- I remember there. Uh, I, I there's one thing that gives you confidence. It's to what? see other people falling apart sometimes. Who did you see fall apart? The, the guy who was auditioning. One of the guys who was waiting to audition. He was. How did he, he was fall apart? Vi- what he was do? visibly sweaty. Oh. Like he was sweaty. Like it was sweat was dripping down his head. Really. And he was going over the lines in this like really weird, like uh, frantic way. It was, like he was like kind of mouthing the lines while he was sitting there, but it was like. It was like he was falling apart. He was like, "No <laughs> shit, fuck!" Like, it's, it's, what really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was something he was doing that gave me massive confidence. <laughs> and I remember thinking, "Oh, if I just got to audition, this guy's gonna fall apart." Like, <laughs> one down. Yeah. I guess you know it's probably one of those guys that had been in Hollywood. Like, look, when you're coming out here and you're trying to audition for shows, it's totally a. a crapshoot you could get super lucky on the very first show you get cast and all of a sudden you're on a television show it probably helps that you don't know if it's early where you don't really know the stakes yeah it, maybe it does but it also helps if you just get lucky and you are what they're looking for yeah. but you could also be here for 20 years and never get cast in shit that's that's possible too oh, yeah especially if you have the wrong look or the wrong you know whatever you're you trying always to do. used to say Everybody in this town, three auditions away from being a being a star. Yeah, three auditions away. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, every single person. Yeah. I mean, look, there's some fucking really untalented people on television right now that are stars, mm-hmm. stars of reality shows. I mean, really untalented people. Are you really gonna chew into the microphone, you motherfucker? Uh, Roseanne was you. like out here for what a week or a day, and she got you know passed at the comedy store, and then she got a TV show like quickly thereafter. Roseanne, yeah, for real? yeah. she had a crazy yeah. ride. She was in uh, Denver. She started out in Denver. Oh yeah, she got really good in Denver. That's a credit but, for her. Yeah, by the time she came, well, you know what, man? Um, there's a there's a kind of an attitude that uh, Denver people have. There's like they're friendly folks. But, you know, there's a, there's a hard edge to that place. I mean, they're in the Rocky Mountains. They have bears and shit there. You know, yeah. it's like, it's a crazy place to live. Be, living in Colorado is a little nutty. So they, they, they tolerate a little more, like, hardiness. You know what I mean? And so Roseanne, like, coming out of there and then going to the comedy store, is like, she had already built up yeah, this act in this cool, smart, you know, hard-edged town in Denver. There's p- people dealing with the fucking elements every day. Yeah, and then from there she's in L.A. and there's no comics like her. You know, she's no, she's talking totally about like what unique. it's like to be a housewife. Yeah, and killing, normal killing too, killing. She's probably hard to follow. Oh, you could never follow her, man. Yeah. Do you remember people that have a? I mean, dude, uh, if folks who uh, weren't alive when Roseanne Barr first hit, she's like. Her voice annoyed me, but then I gave it another shot like a few years later, and I was like, oh, this show's pretty good. She's a great comic. You think and, so? Yes. Yeah. Especially back in the day. You know, especially when she when she first made it. She to me is one of the most influential comedians ever. Really? Yep. Because for women there'd never been a woman like her before. She's the Kinnison version of a woman. There'd never been a woman like that before. She I could heard she had fucking, like thirty minutes though. 
I don't know, man. She did more than one special. I mean, she didn't maintain that level stand up, you yeah. know, once she became super famous and had the, the TV show. It was good and, for the attitude of like, no, this is just who I am. I'm not trying to be anything. She was badass, dude. When she was, before she got her television show, when she was just doing stand up, she was badass. There was no women like her before. She was a total new thing. She was an overweight white woman who didn't give a fuck. Didn't give a fuck. And she had kids and she didn't give a fuck. She sent Mitzi a black rose, a dead rose. <laughs> It's, yeah, she Why'd wanted to send a message. I don't know. A message. They fought oh, with each other. God, that's Black hilarious. roses are roses are the rarest of all roses. Mm. Black roses. Well, it's a nice thing to send then. Yeah. Unless it's voodoo attached. Oh, maybe it she is. Might have some voodoo on it. Roseanne believes in a lot of wacky shit. She's out there sometimes. Oh, dude, she's so out there. She's like Aries. She won't touch hands too. There. She's one of those. Really? Very rarely we'll touch hands. Touch my hand. Oh wow! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I feel pretty good Way about it. Don't, make the cut. don't get Wait. mad at me. Why not? You Why even not? Her, bro. I you did meet her. Matter. She wouldn't shake my hand. For real? Yeah, Alan Stevens introduced me to her mm. in a fucking office building. What on the street? Wow, that's sad. I'm sorry. It's all right. I was just thinking, like, that's not. Come on, it's not acceptable to say I don't shake hands. <laughs> just don't. Just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about people that are like crazy uh, ADD and worried about what diseases? What do those people do if they're not famous? They obsessive just, compulsive? Do they just die? I don't know, man. I mean, you can't do that at the plant. Right. You can't. No one's going to accept that. At the that. plant. Everybody's in the Flintstones yeah. working at the fucking plant. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't shake hands. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you... No way. Yeah. Why Why is that allowed, right? Why? Is yeah, allowed? I think it has to be like... It's a movie star thing. Yeah, it's a fame thing. Howard Hughes. Well, I think we're, I was saying, I think we're uniquely uh, fortunate in being stand-up comedians. That you're, we're forced to look at ourselves all the time. And I think yeah. if you, you want to think about someone who gets pushed into these weird boxes of, of power, you know, power that's sort of unnatural, you know, power that like really like doesn't exist anywhere in the, in the, the, the natural world. Where someone is like more famous than other people, so everyone around them, like, is like terrified of them, yeah. and so they what they do is they just have these situations where they you know have a show and throw soda at the fucking guy who's running the show, or they, <laughs> they like we were talking about like one of those um, Grace Under Fire, Brent Butler, yeah. apparently uh, threw a coke in the face of the dude who was doing Grace Under Fire. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like fucking swore at him and said some nasty shit to him. And, and, then, and then they canceled the show. Oh, like, yeah. She was like, I'm, I'm too big for, for this. And they're it's like, almost no, you're like not. it's total unnatural behavior to have this one person like Brett Butler. Lack of repercussions. And, yeah, and being so lack of repercussions. Famous. And without thinking about yourself all the time, without examining, it must be a weird, weird, weird You know what it is? Be. Hecklers, 75% of hecklers are cute women. Cute to above women. Trying to get some, trying to get some Irish fear dick. No, so just trying, trying to, to like they've never been really told to shut up because they're too pretty. There's a little of that. There's a little confusion. So they don't know. They're like, this has nothing to do with you. Be quiet. Well, people get confused and think that because you're talking, they should be able to talk too. Yeah. Wait a minute. You just can't talk. <laughs> you can't just be talking. No, 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 no. I don't agree with them. I'm going to say something. I want to say something. Excuse I, me. <laughs> no, it's not cool. I no, it's a not girl okay. Out in Calgary, I had her. She wrote uh, letters to every one of the clubs I was booked at for the next like fifteen weeks. Are you serious? Yeah, saying what a horrible person I am and how she didn't do anything. What happened? <laughs> I threw her out for being horrible. She was talking all through the first guy, and then I started. And I was like, "Hey, stop, stop! I saw you talking for thirty straight minutes. You got to be quiet. We're, just not gonna, we're not going to do that." And then they were like, "All right." And they did one more thing. I told them to be quiet again, and then I heard her go. Next subject. And I was like, get out. Just go. Get out of here. Front seats. We got we got extra ones. I just had to do throw out my first person on a Thunder Pussy the other day for the same thing. The girl what? was talking the whole time. The boyfriend would not shut her up. Yeah, the boyfriend he, doesn't shut he her up. He's just happy to be she getting some. You can't shut a girl up. You either ask her to be quiet or you ask her to leave with you or you leave her there. Or you Those leave her there, yeah. You can't like my shut thing. her up, man. <laughs> that shit never works. Yeah. Especially like a really <laughs> mouthy woman. Yeah. It's really like that's what she likes to do. Yeah. Some people like some people like hold back all week long, uh -huh. and then they like to get drunk, get and drunk, and get fighty, get crazy, yeah, get fucking aggressive. 
Yeah, it ruined my whole entire set because she was just fucking happens, sitting man. there the whole time, and I'm just like, all right, I couldn't take it anymore. It happens, man. Yeah. It happens. It's it so happens annoying. all the time. Yeah, it's weird. You know, it's it's the enemy of comedy sometimes, but then sometimes it's fucking hilarious. Sometimes it turns out to be something funny. You know, we also have the advantage that we, we were comedy store comics. There was no crowd control. None. 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 Zero. We, like, people would say, like, I would do, like, a show and someone None. would heckle. And it would go so well, people would say, was that planned? Like, tell <laughs> me, was that guy a plant? I'm like, no, where'd you come up with all that stuff? Like, when you, when you start out at the comedy store, you go to war. Not Every only week. is it not police, even when you come off and there's been a horrible heckler the whole time, no one then goes to the, the door guy and goes, oh, you should throw somebody out. They just moan about it in the back to themselves. Yeah. Fucking ass. And then the next guy deals with it, <laughs> the guy after that deals with it, and nobody says something. Yeah. It's hilarious. I'm guilty of it, too. That place was the worst. <laughs> yeah. There's no Yeah, place. Sam Tripoli always thought that people were, they'd be like, you throw him out if he was talking to the mayor, but not for me. <laughs> there's like, also an extra douchiness to that place because it's in Hollywood and yeah. it's a famous, iconic building. So you would get these people that were like, there's an extra level of douche that you get from people that are like in show business that are douches or trying to make it in show business oh, there's yeah. a lot of people that give attempts at show business and they're really insane <laughs> and it doesn't go well for them and so they'll if they'll be at a comedy club and they'll see someone doing something and they decide in their insane head i'm still good I, not only that th this guy ain't shit and i'm better than him i could be funnier than him yeah. like i've heard people it's like you're a mattress salesman i've heard people you don't do this audience. anymore i've heard people that could be be a comic or yeah. it could be an actor in their mind yeah but it's just this extra douchiness of people that are out here <sighs> yeah. you know what i mean it's like it's not an unchecked douchiness that you don't find that often in the east coast it's a different kind of douchiness unchecked. yeah unchecked like, what the fuck is wrong with you yeah nobody like they don't have friends they don't have people to go shut the fuck up they like, have listen drunk to hecklers you're in boston though it's a different kind of drunk heckler. yeah it is different. it's like out of control drunk they're heck. savages yeah they're they're, they're 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 just like they're not even making they're all yeah. blacked out already they're the descendants of wild savages that came over here on boats before there were movies. I mean, just stop and think about that. They didn't know what the fuck was over here. These people are crazy. The genetics of the first Irish that uh, that came to America, yeah, m m maniacs. <laughs> Who Fucking would get on the maniacs. boat and survive Who the it? the fuck would do that? Hey, we're thinking about going on a boat to a place that we can't really describe because you know we don't have any photos or anything because they haven't invented cameras yet. But uh, it'll take a few months. Because <laughs> they haven't invented you know, cameras yet. We're gonna, <laughs> it'll take a few months, and hopefully we won't die of starvation. And uh, by the time we get there, I mean hopefully the savages won't eat your babies. They won't shoot arrows into us. As by we're hopefully, we mean they will. They will eat a lot of your babies. Uh, no, hopefully they won't. You like your babies. You don't want them to get eaten. Otherwise, you can't spread your seed across the country. Wait, so when did we make enemies with the with the Indians? Why did they attack and they just like steal the, the women and stuff? Listen, everybody that lands in a country and invades an a country is an attacker. Yeah. You know, you might not think of yourself as an attacker, you think of yourself as a colonist, but you're an attacker if you run into people that were already there. And we're like, it's no, just we're that good. simple. We yeah. You know, and you can say, well, hey, you know, we they should make room for us too. Okay, maybe, but maybe they don't want to. Because it's and, theirs. Yeah, and if you show any aggression to them and you're taking food like out of their enemies. children's mouths. We gotta get, we gotta get like, these things out of here. Yeah, and then there was also the fucking treaties that were broken uh, yeah. and all the Here's horrific some crimes that they Here's fucking... Here's some smallpox blankets for you. Oh, yeah, all the horrific crimes that were yeah. perpetrated on the American Indian. I mean, God, you start and th you hear those stories and think about it and... Yeah, you, you, you hear about the slaughters and the fucking mass genocide and the just the numbers... Yeah. You know what? Australia, they're respectful of the Aboriginal people. Yeah. If one Aboriginal kills another one, the white people don't deal with it. Really? Like, you guys, it's on you to deal with this. You know what freaked me out when I was there? Because they had their own justice system. What freaked me out when I was there was uh, they were telling me about um, during the 50s, I guess it was, yeah. where they had this concerted effort. They decided to take Aboriginal children from their parents. Just steal them. And raise them in the white world. Oh. Like to, to help them, to benefit them. So, <laughs> so oh, it's egocentric so to begin with. Crazy and dark. Oh. But the idea was that they were going to try to civilize these people. And the only way to do it would be to Forcibly. take their fucking kids. Like that was a real plan. That was, that was they we're really involve enacted them. that. Yeah, man. They took their kids. Oh, wow. They took their kids because they believed that their culture was better. So much better. That's so You're crazy. You're an idiot if you don't think so. That's so crazy. <laughs> That's so crazy that people could take people's children. Yeah. That's so crazy. And, you know, apparently, like, they have a lot of the same issues that American Indians have 
with uh, alcohol problems in their communities. Aboriginals. Yeah. Aborigines. Yeah, the Native Americans, I, apparently it's a genetic issue with a lot of them that they don't have ancestors. Because grew up without it for so long. Yeah, their ancestors didn't develop the tolerance uh. and they weren't accustomed to alcohol the way like Europeans were. So apparently Aboriginal uh, people in Australia had a similar problem. So a lot of them, there's a lot of alcoholism, a lot of real problems with, I don't know if they ever had alcohol before, but they probably didn't have the shit that we have. <laughs> Even if they had their own alcohol, if they, they didn't have wild turkey. You know, they didn't, <laughs> yeah. they, just, they yeah. didn't have any crazy tequilas. <laughs> they didn't have some shit. Yeah, maybe that's a mead. Yeah. That's they might have some fermented berry juice that <laughs> yeah. kind of gets you high. You leave it out and chase off the flies. Yeah, but they were so arrogant that they thought it was okay to take their kids. Wow, that's so mean. It's horrible. Pulling a kid horrible. away from a mom. Horrifying, terrifying, the ugliest aspects of humanity. <sighs> yeah, I mean, the thing is... You know is, what I started to think recently? What? So I thought about Philip Morris. The tobacco company. Mm-hmm. And you think of their evil people like trying to addict you, even though they know it's already like bad for you. But they're not evil people. They're just people that had a job there. Mm-hmm. That are doing that stuff. They're not these like all old men. They're just people who got a job and now they're still doing that job. Yeah. Even though they know it's terrible. Sort of. Someone has to make the decision to sell cigarettes. Yeah. And um, you could easily just say, "Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take this job in the I accounting think, firm." At Philip I think Morris. cigarettes are gonna be a thing of the past. I think the shit that he's sucking on. That kind of thing is yeah. going to make much more sense for people. If that stops killing people, why yeah. wouldn't they do it? It's a nicotine distribution device. It's definitely getting people into smoking these again now, and then it's helping yeah. the it's helping like the tobacco farms find a a, a way to make money again. Yeah, because, because they've all invested because, heavily in it. Because new people are actually getting hooked on just to smoking nicotine now. I've oh noticed. yeah. What is the actual health um, of those? differential? Like, the, well, what, what's they, the, they, the difference? They, those are outlawed in New York now. Really? Yeah, in, why is indoors. That? Because they said um, um, secondhand smoke, but even though it was vapor, but they said they put the problem is they put on their package um, safer than smoking cigarettes. And they're like, uh, you have to prove that. You can't just right. say that. You need yeah. to show me a study. Yeah. Yeah. That is the problem. You do have to prove that. Yeah. It's, a, it's like some sort of, like, say it's carcinogen or something where it falls into the same category as cigarettes. See, it doesn't seem like that blue cigarette stuff. It lingers more. It lingers more. Like smoke. I don't smell it, though. You, but you definitely smell, uh, like, because how I found out about this actual one, this girl was smoking it, and it smelled like strawberries. And I just walked by, and I'm like, what? What was that strawberry is smell? Is that your vagina? And then, oh, shit. And then she showed it to me, and I'm like, oh, I'm winning that. But it, it does I, smell, but the, yeah, it, and I can see if you don't like strawberry, and then you walk around. Well, come on, man, I'm at the library. Yeah, but people with perfume, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's nothing wrong with that smell. You smell it. You, uh, I smell it when you just did it, but it smells nice. It's like a nice smell. I smell it. Like cigarettes. Right. Cigarettes are disgusting, man. You used to come into the car after you smoked cigarettes. Brian would like pretend he wasn't smoking. He would go. Oh yeah, would stick to him in the cold. Oh, and you'd come, you'd come into the car, and we would all smell it. Like, oh, dude, that's nasty. People don't like to hear that shit. People that smoke cigarettes, especially. Oh no. Oh yeah. They don't like to hear. No, you can't smell it. Okay, fine. I guess I made up the smell I just smelled. So stinky. Yeah. In the cold. In the cold, you come in. Stinky fuck. Awful. Cigarette smells a stinky fucking smell. It is gross. It's bad for you too, fucks. Wait, no, I get it not together. Heard that. It's bad for you. Don't do it. Get it together. These will be very better for that. It'll probably will take off. It'll probably be the cigarette in ten years. It'll probably have to. Well, this, this is less. the thing. They say that nicotine is actually an infect, uh, a, an effective cognitive boost. It really? gives you like a little. That was one of the it's things one that the uh, Stephen King said. When Stephen King stopped smoking cigarettes, he yeah. said he really felt it. He really felt the difference in his synapses firing, is the way he described it, and writing his books. And nicotine has like a sort of a stimulating effect on on, on huh. thinking and creativity for a lot of people. But it's the tar and the, and the, and the uh, tobacco that gets you. It's well, no, it's a lot of the is the chemicals. There's there's like 590 chemicals that they add to cigarettes on top of the tobacco itself, all approved by our lovely government. But these insane chemicals are essentially designed to change the flavor and to make it more addictive. You know what they do with the, with the nicotine? They have a certain amount. They'll shoot it up real high, like mm-hmm. all of a sudden, from five to like seven. And then everyone has to smoke less cigarettes because it's like all of a sudden they're getting too much. So they're only smoking like half a cigarette or whatever. Uh-huh. And they're getting their fix of whatever they need. And then they plummet it. Once you get used to that, they plummet it down to like what? two. Yeah. And then you start smoking more because you're not getting what you need. Then they push it right back up to average again. Wait a minute. They vary it? Yeah. 
but on occasion in order to get you fucking more addicted. They do that now that they already know it causes death. They're still trying to get you more addicted. I, well, I didn't know they could do that. So they can vary the amount of nicotine they have. Yeah. How do you know this? That's what a word on the street is. Oh, okay. <laughs> motherfucker. That's what I've heard from smokers. <laughs> I think Big J told me that. It's it's a dark business, man. Yeah. That's for sure. Especially if you've ever seen anybody that's dying of cigarettes, emphysema, people that are dying of uh, lung cancer. Yeah, I have not. Um, Mike. Pat James died of that, though. Really? Yeah, he he got a stage four tumor. That's when they found it. Whoa! He was dead in like two weeks. It wouldn't make any sense, and then gone. Whoa! Yeah, smoked a lot of cigarettes. I smoked a lot of cigarettes. Mike Lacey uh, from the uh, Lacey? Comedy Magic Club. Oh yeah, uh-huh. uh huh. Was uh, he made us. you cry that time, Brian? He was telling you to smoke, stop smoking cigarettes. Oh, why was I crying? Because he gets to you, yeah. dude. He's like, so he's nice. Such a nice he's a guy. No, we, Brian, look at me. Look at me. We care about you. We don't want you to die. He did one of those, like 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 Robin. Well, Williams he's did. a legit beautiful person. Was yeah. that break really up with is. a girl at the same day or something? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> your cat hurt its foot, Boy. so you were fucking <laughs> shoving cigarettes directly into your veins. You were opening up veins. I, I dreamt I stubbed the toe. Yeah, um, <laughs> I dreamt I stubbed the toe. <laughs> I can't fucking hit anything. He I know that was so uncomfortable. The... You were bad. <laughs> it's like... I cry pretty easy. I, I almost <laughs> cried the other day. It's, it's just how much, what I'm drinking, I think, sometimes. Maybe. What you're drinking yeah. makes you cry? Yeah, if I drink like too much turkey, that's why I need to Wild I stop turkey? doing turkey. I start crying. Like It's just you like somebody will say like, the wrong thing. Beautiful? Like, ah! Your body's breaking down. <laughs> you cry because something is beautiful? Yeah, you, stuff uh, like that, or I think about something if ridiculous. You, if you drink uh, that much wild turkey, your body's breaking down. Yeah, it's just, just slowly dying. It's getting poison. It's moaning like my old cat. Have you had Fireball, Joe? <laughs> shot Fireball? Have you had Fireball? What is that? It's been a while. Yeah, what is it? Have you had it? Yeah, it's like cinnamony, right? Yeah. What is it? It's a. It's the shot that used uh, used to be popular when I was in college, Gold and then it like, kind of went away. They yeah, near the time of Gold Slogger and Aftershock, like all those really Aftershock. weird shots. Yeah. But then it kind of went away, and it came back, and they like repackaged the, it, it and everything. Now it's like everywhere you go, it's everyone's drinking Fireball, but it's my new drink. Savages, savages, wow. each and every one of you. Cinnamon whiskey. I wanted to talk to you guys about this uh, Jerry Seinfeld thing. Oh, yeah. Um, pull this up, Brian. Pull it up. It's on Gawker. Gawker.com. G-A-W-K-E-R. Just pull up Gawker. Uh, it's like right on the front page. It's who cares about diversity in comedy, says Jerry Seinfeld. Oh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not what you want. Just look up. But look up. Uh, just do a Google search on the, the title. Um, diversity Jerry Seinfeld. And he's getting just gawker diversity jerseys. He's doing a public interview. Yeah. And There's people this, around. I don't want to comment on it until we actually pull the video up because I would like you to hear it from him first before we even uh before we even uh comment on it. Because it's it's a it's an important subject for guys like Ari and I. Um yeah. as as comics. There's like some shit that they're trying to attach to this here. Of twenty two episodes. Yeah, let's had. get into that. No, I back up, back up, back, back up, up, back up. Back up. I have noticed that most of the guests are mostly white males of 22 episodes. Yeah, that you've let's had. get into that. No, I, <laughs> but but you, you take a look over here, Peter. What do you see? A lot of a lot of whiteies. What's going on here? But but I, you, oh, this really pisses me off. But well, go no, ahead. No, no, no. Really <laughs> pisses me off. Well, uh, that's okay. I'm go sorry. ahead. But you made a comment on the Tina Fey episode that I yeah. thought was interesting. That I'd, I'd like to get your thoughts on a little bit more. You said you were talking to her, and you said something about the female comedians. It's a struggle for them to balance their feminine projections with their comedic goals. Yes. And in the context of comedy, not gender diverse. I just want to know what you meant by that. Well, I was kind of curious what it's like to be a woman in comedy as opposed to a man. There is a little bit of a difference. And I thought that might be an interesting thing to discuss from her perspective. She's so successful at it. And I was just wondering how she looked at it, if she even thought about it. And she kind of gave me the yeah. answer, which is, yeah, you do have to think about that. But you know, it's just another thing to think about. OK, all right, fair enough. Now you but there were a lot of things about uh, comedians and cars in the beginning. The first 10 I did, I think, were all white males. And people were writing all about that, which I... That's I, part of the reason why I asked. I, people had uh, tweeted at me when I said I'm interviewing with Jerry Seinfeld. I said, okay, ask him about their gender diversity on the show. Yeah, I mean, it's, people think it's, it's the census or something. I mean, this has got to <laughs> represent the, the actual pie chart of, of, of America. Who cares? It's just funny. You know, funny is, is the, 
is the world that I live in. You're funny, I'm interested. You're not funny, I'm not interested. Okay. And, and I have no interest in gender or race or anything like that, but everyone else is kind of with their little calculating, is this the exact right mix? You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's, uh, to me, it's anti-comedy. It's okay. anti-comedy. It's, it's more about, you know, PC nonsense okay. than are you making us laugh or not? Right, right. Yeah, well, they went off on that and said that, see, it shows that he's, like, racist. Well, I saw people, uh, I uh, saw a video. I don't even want to bring it up. I don't even want to pull the video up because I don't want to watch it again because it was so annoying of people that were taking that and saying that that's a problem. They are taking that. He's not saying... All he, he's, he's not saying, I don't care if you yeah. think I'm racist. He's saying, I, don't, I only care about what's funny. He's trying to make things funny, and he's not concerned about making them diverse. It's like if his you think, like, oh, how come you didn't have anybody with mustaches on your show? Because like, I wasn't even thinking about that. That's what he's saying. And you should be able to do creatively whatever you want, especially when your goal is to just make stuff funny. Like, why should he have to? I mean, if, you, if I watch a show with all Koreans in it, I don't get upset. That there's no white people. I get and people a, say yeah. that, well, you know what, that's just because you're white and you're privileged and okay. white people have but the I get advantage. There's, a, yeah. there's an overall problem maybe of not using enough black people and not using enough people of color. But that's not each individual shoot's problem. Yeah, well, it, it's it's not the best thing about this world that, you know, there's racism. It's one of the worst things, right? It's not the best thing about our culture that, you know, we, we aren't equally represented in the media. It's not the best thing when you have to, you know, you have to factor in populations, you have to yeah. factor in, you know, how long the, these people have been in the business, how long these people have been in the business. There's a lot of shit going on when you talk about putting a fucking show on television. A lot of people think that once someone gets into a position where they have a successful show, then on top of having to create that show, they also have an obligation to be diverse because they're representing America, yeah. and they're supposed to like give opportunities to like a equal percentage of the population. They're trying to get me to do that for that storyteller show. Well, this is where it's a problem yeah. because no, what, what it should you should be able to do what you're not talking about like some government position. What yeah. you're talking about is a creative thing that you're making. You should, if you are comfortable doing it only with black people, you should only do yeah. it with black people. If you're, and then it becomes a problem of like, well. I asked like four or five girls, they none of them could do it. Yeah. So I did my part. Uh, what am I supposed to get somebody worse just because? Yeah, it's ridiculous. You should, especially like that, like the storyteller type thing, you should get whoever you think is good. It's your yeah. show, things that you think are interesting. But I know you. So I know if you find a woman who's a gay black, uh, there's also not that many black seven at the foot clubs. tall woman, and she's really funny. You'll yeah. fucking love her, yeah. and you'll start talking about how great she is. If she's a five foot nine white girl, you know who's really cute, but she's really hilarious. You'll say she's really hilarious. I know you don't give a shit about anything yeah. but funny. So it's one of the reasons why I wanted to play this when you're here, because it's like. This, That's what you should be focused him, on. But they're tricking him. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a setup it, question. It's it is a setup question because it's a it's a kind of a goofy. You know what he's trying to do when he's trying to make a good he's television also, show. He's also pretty much most of that show is him in a car getting coffee with his friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, there's clicks. Yeah, people have that people they hang out with, and there's not that many black comics at the clubs. There's nothing wrong with it. That's the point. It's just who who he is and who his friends are. Yeah, he did a show with those four people. So he was gonna have them on. Yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, uh, where, where, you want to force a black guy in? It's like he's just having his, mostly his friends. And, and look what happens when they got had Chris Rock on. They got pulled over. So it's just <laughs> <Did they? laughs> yeah. At the end did of the episode, really? they got pulled over. <laughs> he should be able to do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, it's his thing. You know, he should be able to do whatever he wants. You know, the idea that you should be even debating that he's got issues because what he wants is different than when you also expect him to want. it doesn't represent the exact numbers. What, so he had three out of 20. If he had five out of 20, it would have been okay. There's nothing wrong with Sex in the City. There's nothing wrong with a show that's only about women. Sex in the City is horrible. Yes, it is wrong. No, if you're a woman and you were in your 40s when that shit came out, you would love it. It's just wrong for Ari Shafir. Yeah. But for them... Nothing it's wrong women with that. Entertainment. If it's a bunch of women doing shit for women, they should be able to cast whatever women they want to cast. Oh yeah, it shouldn't be a man that steps up and says, "Hey." That was my favorite. You used you know, to say about fucking... Lifetime Television. You saw it was a billboard of a, a girl holding a gun up, another girl holding another gun up, and then another guy behind her, like in the force also. And you're like, what is that? "Lifetime Television. It's like sci-fi for women. <laughs> <laughs> like this could never exist." Yeah. What are you talking about? You're both hot, and you're leading the squad. Yeah. Really? And the guys behind you is yeah. back up. Just accepting that role. 
It is like sci-fi for women. Yeah. Though. It is. Wouldn't it be awesome if the world was like this? Yeah, they there was a few of those fucking silly movies. But that's okay for them, man. If that's what they want, it's, it's okay. Yeah, if that's what they want. Black entertainment is so bad. Whoa, what are it's you saying? It's so bad. What, what they feed mean? them is fucking garbage. You mean like Tyler Perry? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's one. That's one. It's just all of it. It's so bad. Have you ever seen like the CW, the black shows? Which shows? Whatever they are, over the years. Moesha to, to the Wayans Brothers to whatever. With the Wayans Brothers? It's How just, dare you? It's just bad entertainment they're offering them. They never offer them anything of value. You say them like there's some other people. Yeah, they offer that a group, <laughs> the blacks. I the feel blacks. bad for them. The blacks. All their fucking black comedy movies. It's like, what is this? Soul Plane. It's just goofy. Well, whatever Nothing happened to like out. Robert Townsend? Yeah. Remember he used to do- Hollywood Shuffle. Yeah. He did some really cool, funny mm-hmm. movies. Yeah, what happened to people like that? How many, like, when it's really interesting because there's like a bunch of known uh, white comedy directors, you know, mm-hmm. like Judd Apatow, Harold Ramis, you know, over the years, been yeah, tons of them. Guys who produce Todd white, Phillips, Todd Phillips, white, yeah. whatever his name is. Todd Phillips? One of those. Yeah. They're producing like white comedies. Yeah. Like, hilarious white comedies. You don't hear about a lot of black guys that are doing that. It's so true. Yeah. But are they white comedies or are they just comedies? Well, they're not because I Craig Robinson is on like, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. <laughs> he, he was awesome in This Is the End. He was really good in that. <sighs> Fuck yeah, he was. I like the part where Michael Sarah got stabbed by a thing, and then he's like, "Somebody took my cell phone," and then he's, I started ringing his back pocket. He's like, "Oh, it's really embarrassing." <laughs> 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 that was <laughs> a funny movie, talk. man. When Kenny Powers came in, that's when it became the most awesome movie ever. <laughs> he's such a dickhead. He started washing his so feet good. with their fucking whatever <laughs> water you. they had remaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Small amount of water. <laughs> but again, I mean, you should be able to make a show with whoever you want to make a show. It doesn't make you a racist and it, person. And he's right. It's irrelevant. The it's terms you're talking about have nothing to do with that world. That yeah. world, that's what he said. It exists in funny. That's yeah. it. That's all that matters. But the idea that you should have affirmative action in comedy, that you should, you know, and that's essentially what they're saying. They're saying that you should have to have X amount of women. You should have to have X amount of black people. If you don't, they're saying, wait a minute, do you have just a lot of white friends? But then, then, then the problem is then you're making female comedy worse. You're making it worse for advancing people without merit. It's you're true. making it overall worse. Well, you can, most certainly. You know, the other ar- argument would be that he just doesn't hang out in those cliques, so he doesn't know these funny women, and it would benefit everybody if he got to know them and had them on. I could see that argument, maybe, yeah, if there was, like, a pool of talent that you knew that was, like, really fucking crackling that you wanted to uh, have on your show. But at the end of the day, it's who he wants to talk to. Like, when people say to me, like, why would you have a Bigfoot expert on? Because I want to fucking talk to a Bigfoot to expert. Bigfoot, yeah. I don't, you know, why do you have a bow hunting expert on? Because I want to talk to a bow hunting expert. Yeah, okay, I find this, it interesting. You don't have to listen, yeah. you know, but if you want to, uh, I will do my best to try to make it entertaining, and I will try to ask the questions that I have. I will yeah. try to explore as objectively and thoroughly yeah, as but possible that's my, my perspective and my point of view. So I mean, how, I mean, somebody asked me the other day, like, how many gay people we had on? Well, I don't know, like three or four or something like that. Like maybe. Melissa Etheridge, Todd Glass, Justin, uh, Martindale. Justin Martindale. Who else? <sighs> we had some other ones. Let's out somebody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a Super few others. Twink. Well, who, whoever the fuck it was. Um, you know, and, and, and someone was like, well, why haven't you had more? I, whatever. I don't know. Who cares? Like, why, why do I have to? Like, what, uh, now I don't want to. How about that? You know, now, you, now you bring it up. I'm annoyed. You know? But then it's also like, am I just not friends enough with black people or gay people listen man anybody i find interesting i'll talk to i give zero fucks about what they look like i don't care i don't care if someone's black or white or fat or skinny if they're interesting they're interesting i I don't care i really don't i don't care what your what kind of music you like i don't give a fuck it doesn't i'm not judgmental on that stuff please don't talk to anybody i'm sweatpants in it to death son i'm into it i'm sweatpants in it I'm uh, with a, a jacket, a nice tracksuit jacket, <laughs> oh. and a fat fanny pack with my Higher Primate logo. Oh. Have you seen the Higher Primate fanny pack, Ari? I don't think so. So sexy. Let me see So it. sexy. Once you see it, you'll understand my passion for this garment. <laughs> Eventually, we'll all have purses. But until then, the Higher fr- Primate fanny pack I do think the men got up. the shaft on the Look at uh, that, son. accessible uh, Look at that. pouches. Look at that beautiful leather. Look at the front. See that little Higher Primate logo? It says Higher Primate. It's a mo- yeah, it's a monkey, a monkey. with a, uh, a, a chimp, rather, with a light bulb above his head. Like, I got an idea. First idea. First idea. That's first the Higher evolution. Primate. Yeah. That's the first step. A curious chimp. 
We used to always look through Curious the checks George. at the comedy store to see who got what. And we mm-hmm. were always like, who's higher primate? <laughs> There's a few we didn't know. That's not my company. My company's, well, I can't tell you. It shouldn't tell you it online. Well, Everybody, oh, it keep yeah. it together. <laughs> but uh, the um, the higher primate fanny pack is just the beginning. Nice. From there, I'm going to launch a bunch of other games. Yeah, that pisses me off. Do you see what Natasha did when she had the, uh, that thing for New Year's Eve? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. People Finally. got mad at her. Yeah. yeah. And she it's made. It's dumb. There's no reason to get mad. It's, it's dumb. so dumb. And she made the best apology you could ever make. It was perfect. She was, was like, fuck was, you. I'm not sorry. You misunderstood it. They're old. Their teeth fall out when they're old. That's the joke. Well, not only that, she was like, you know, she was pretty clear that she was just joking around. Yeah. You know, she was, it was pretty obvious that it was just She's her like, trying to. She's like, real veterans fun. are being mistreated yeah. as they come home now. That's the yeah. issue you should worry about if you want to honor the veterans. It's a joke. And it's yeah. not that people were really upset. It's that the people think that they have the license to be upset and that they can get you in trouble. Now, what That's I want to see is. That's what people are yes, trying to do. Yes. They're trying to get you in trouble. Now, what They're I not s- just trying to change things, they're trying to get, get you, in, you trouble. in trouble. So they can feel, yeah, they can contact the network. So you should do something. I was offended. Yeah. She said this. Like, okay. do you, you don't have anybody in your family that says something that dumb occasionally. They miss one. You know, they go for a little old person joke. I want and vengeance, and I, I deserve vengeance. She should be fired. But if an episode of a street. drama is not any good, you can't fire anybody. Put her in the street. What I want to see is if it's not such an innocuous joke, if it actually is a borderline like rape or murder or pedophile mm-hmm. joke where it's not completely nothing and it's right. not a cute woman doing the non-apology. Right. I want to see how people get that. Or if people like Chris Rock are going to puss out again like they did Tracy Morgan and just do a 180 and go from like, no, he can say whatever he wants to, well, all right, you go too far sometimes. What happened? Chris Rock, when Tracy Morgan had that thing with the gay th- He said he went too far? Yeah, he just totally flipped his Well, views. there's certain they things that you feel like. They called him overnight. Wow. There's certain things that you feel like you can't fucking endorse. Yeah. You know, and that like, kind of gay bashing, like saying that. He would stab his his son if his son was gay. People are like, oh, I can't endorse that. I can't endorse that. But if you know Tracy Morgan, if you've been doing this stuff act, forever, that's what he does. He yeah. says ridiculously outrageous shit that he doesn't really mean. And now because it's popular, you're gonna go against it. Yeah, but you can't. You say can't, whatever like, he wants. You know what he's doing. Everybody knows what he's doing. It's like a joke to pretend that he's not saying something completely outrageous that he absolutely doesn't mean. How old? How old you are? Yeah. That's what he said. How old you are? Are you 20? You, say, you must pee fast. <laughs> How fast your pee? My pee's slow. Yeah, he rubs his belly. Someone getting pregnant. He would slap his belly on that TV show. Someone getting pregnant tonight. I'll tell you yeah. right now. Someone getting pregnant. You know, that's his whole thing. There's a real rumor that he this. couldn't read. A real legitimate rumor that people were talking about. Well, Charlie about. Barnett couldn't read. That's how he d- couldn't get on the Saturday Night Live. Really? Yeah, Charlie Barnett. Charlie was, Barnett was Chris, was Shave Chappelle's teacher? A um, mentor or something, whatever? Yeah, him? him and a lot of other guys. Uh, when I was in New York, he was already not there anymore. I don't Barnett? know where he was. He died. He died of AIDS, I believe. Oh. Um, but he was uh, like a guy who... Uh, it was Dave Chappelle. He sort of taught Dave Chappelle how to do... Um, that those street side shows, I think. Yeah. I might be talking out of school, but I have seen Dave Chappelle do a street side show. Dave Chappelle did it in Montreal. It was pretty hilarious. Really? I mean, he was really young, too. It was when I first met him. I think he was probably like, I first met him in New York, and then I saw him again up in Montreal when he was like maybe like 19. He stood on the side of the, on the highway? Took his hat sidewalk? off, put his hat on the ground, and did a comedy show, and then passed his hat around. Wow. And people put money in it. It was wow. before he was famous. And he would just do it at the drop of a hat. Just do. Did you ever notice? There Just to make people, money. You know, he, and it was funny. It was good. He would. Get I wonder ca- what captivate. tricks he must have developed to get the crowd. Like, he must have developed certain things in order to get them to gather around. Um, I think he would just call them around, and yeah. you know, he looks like a, a guy who'd be fun to listen yeah, to does. talk. So people slow down. You know, some some folks are in a hurry, and some folks aren't. And the ones that aren't, they circle them, and then he'll do like a little five minute comedy show, and then pass a hat around. I saw him do it in Montreal. Wow. Well, apparently Charlie Barnett used to do that, and he was like legendary at it. He was awesome. He was awesome at like being hilarious to a bunch of people, like off the cuff. He had material that he would do, but he'd also be off the cuff, funny. And he would gather people around, and then he would hand out the hat, pass out the hat, you know. And that's how he would make some money. And uh, he became famous, like doing comedy. Did a lot of stand up. People loved him on stage. And then he got an audition for Saturday Night Live. And apparently, the word was that he got couldn't the part, read. but he couldn't read. So since he couldn't read scripts, they couldn't hire him. It's tough to work yeah. in that environment without being able to read. Yeah, and apparently he had a he had a problem with intravenous drugs, and uh, he loved them. 
Yeah, he found out about them. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. And uh, but he apparently was like, I keep saying apparently. Apparently, I ran out of adjectives or words. <laughs> he was like one of the pioneers of that style of uh, of comedy. Like, really? Uh, yeah. Like well, natural doing, talking. Yeah. Well, not just natural talking, but like knowing how to like captivate a group and get everybody to st- settle down and like put out a hat and like. And that's a that's like an it's yeah. such a tough crowd that when you go onto a stage at a comedy club, it must be nothing. Yeah, it's like you're running uphill all day. Whenever we saw those thirsty promenade people, before we everyone had the thought of like, could I do comedy here? Could yeah, I, could I do it? Yeah, it's hard though. I've never yeah. seen anybody do it besides Dave. I've never seen anybody just do like street comedy. Yeah. It just seems weird. It does. I see them the goofy like the the dancers will do comedy in between when they're gonna make a dance. Well, I don't think Dave would do it today. I mean, I, I know he did do some shows in Seattle. When Remember when he wasn't doing official shows anymore? Yeah, yeah. He did a show in Seattle where he just showed up and brought, like, a speaker and started oh, really? doing stand-up in the park. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just put it down. It's yeah. His, his career has been fucking fascinating. Yeah. He's a fascinating guy. You ever have him on the podcast? I would definitely, but I've never run into him. I, I need to run into him. I haven't run into him since I've been doing it. He said he would yeah. do it. I ran into him a couple times. Yeah, I got to get a hold of him. He would be awesome to have on. Yeah, I bet. He's a good dude, man. Smoke he's a reaper. funny fucking guy too. He's a funny guy. He's been he's been funny for a long. Dude, when time. he came back from Africa, he did that show in the main room. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was if that was after you stopped going there or before. Mm-hmm. I have that on tape. Do you really? In my car. It was so packed, and everybody was there. Fucking Bruce Willis was there. Soundgarden was there. The, the fucking fire department showed up and just asked if they could sit on the steps wow. to block the fucking escape. Wow. Everybody. That was the ticket. Did you see Kiss the other night was at uh, House of Blues, and there was, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger was there. <laughs> St- St- Stallone was there. Paul da- Stanley's doing the podcast. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Dog the Bounty Hunter. You got Eddie Bravo to come in, too? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Eddie can, but I want to get uh, Ace Freely, too. Oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> I met Ace Freely when I was like seven years old. How? My uncle was a he was an artist, and he worked for the advertising agency that created the album covers and the album art. Yeah. Uh, it was back when they had, you know, they were artwork. I mean, they were, the album was, you would, it would open up, like especially like two discs, like Kiss Alive 2, yeah. would have two uh, records in it, and it would open up, and there's all these images and advertising, you know, guys would put together these albums. They, you know, they they made the artwork, so they hired artists, graphic artists, to create these things. And uh, Ace really came into the office, and I was uh, just staying. I went to work with my uncle. Like he took me to work with him because he, I was an artist at the time too. I was really into art, yeah. and so he wanted to see me to see like what his office was like, like in case maybe I wanted to do it someday. And I just so happened to be, he took me in a couple times, but I just so happened to be there the day that Ace Freely arrived. Was he wearing his makeup or no, anything? No, no makeup. That's why it was so crazy. <sighs> because at the time, it was um, like no one knew what they looked like. They would walk around with bandanas over their face. Really? It was, yeah, it was a big thing. Like photographers were constantly trying to catch them. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were trying to catch them out. Because if they caught them, they would get the first photo of them. Oh, like, yeah. And there was a few of like, like Paul TMZ Stanley days. like this where you'd see like this like much of his from Tool face. Time? You'd see like this much of his face. You wouldn't see his total face. You'd just see like a little bit. Yeah. So you saw him? Yeah. So I saw him when I was like, I think it was like seven or eight or something like that. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. I was like starstruck. I can't believe it. Did you tell the rest of your classmates and have them not believe you? Well, my cousin had seen them a bunch. My cousin, Iona, um, she was uh, like friends with them. They would go play softball together, and like she would talk about. It. She's like, "It's the weirdest thing. I played softball with Gene Simmons, and like he had no makeup on. We were playing softball with Kiss, <laughs> and no one knows it's Kiss. They have no makeup on. You're like, this is the nuttiest thing ever." And my uncle was like, "He's a really cool character, very artistic character. So his daughter was very cool as well. She was really like, she's really smart, and she, you know, so like her describing it was very. It was like." She was not. She was totally taking into account the bizarreness of it. She's like, so I'm standing there and I'm playing softball with Kiss, and as I'm got this glove on, I'm looking around. And she's like, "What the fuck am I doing? I'm playing softball with these guys and I have makeup on. Like, this is this is the most famous. Ba- I mean, she was my age at the time. We were both like, you know, like eight how massive did like they that. get? Oh, they were huge. Really? Yeah, they were gigantic. I saw them in the '90s. Kiss. Well, I saw them in the '70s. When I was a little kid, my uncle took me to a show, and uh, that's when he was working for the company back then. 
The, I was really young. They took me to a Kiss show. Like, That's fuck, weird. I might have been cool. like I might have been like ten or something like that. Maybe oh, wow. eleven at the most. I was eleven. But he took me to a Kiss show then. I went to a couple, and then I went to two in a row with Kevin James in uh, really yeah in the the uh, the nineties. Uh, Kiss when they made their comeback. It was in the 90s or the early 2000s? I think it might have been 90s. I don't think I was even on Fear Factor yet. Wow. And Kevin was out here. Kevin had won Star Search, and you know we were just He out won here. Star Search? Yeah. So did Bushman. Yeah, Kevin was a bad motherfucker. Bushman beat Norm MacDonald. Kevin's one of the most underrated stand-ups ever. Really? He, when he's... Really? Yes, yes, listen to me. That dude, he could hit moments on stage. He had some bits on stage that were fucking murderers, but he always wanted to keep it like clean and family friendly, yeah. and he wanted to like you know make it like so he didn't want to piss anybody off. He didn't want people oh. to not be able to go to his shows. You know, he was, he kept his act real clean, especially once he had Can Queens. You know, then he cleaned up even more. Well, he was just you know his, he would never do a bit that you would do or I would do. Would never. Do yeah, a I remember when his hour special guy was one of the first hour specials because it was just too big for a half hour, and it was just like. Let me tell you something. I was with that dude when he was coming up. Before he got yeah. any of that shit, that guy could kill me. He was hilarious. He was really funny. He used yeah. to do this bit about getting pissed, because Kevin is a sweet guy. He's an awesome guy. But if he gets pissed off, he's got a fucking temper. He doesn't do anything, but he, he does get angry at shit. He's not a violent guy. But you could see him get fucking crazy about shit. So he had this bit about his girlfriend. Um, he was like hitting the unlock button on the door at the same time as she was pulling the handle, and they yeah. cancel each other out. Yeah. And he had this bit where they kept doing it again, and doing, and it builds up, and it's a fucking hilarious bit, man. And he would go ape shit on stage and scream, and <laughs> yeah. I don't even think he swore back then. Like, he might swear, he like, a little bit, like, shit or something like that, like, every now and then. But, you know, he was trying to do, like, a very specific type of comedy, you know? That story about him at Montreal or Aspen with, with a Sussman and... and- the fucking the deal he got when you're like come talk to my guy let him see what he can get you oh yeah 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 that's an unfortunate story but i don't think we could repeat that because it's very bad for someone's business oh whatever yeah yeah we we can't repeat numbers either but yeah he got lucky and got a good manager my manager knew exactly what to do they were trying he had an other older manager that wasn't giving him such great advice and they're about to get him to make a terrible yeah, take this thing well, they had said it. a lot of shitty things to him one of the things they said no one would ever believe this if you never worked in hollywood but there was a guy that was working with him before that actually told him to not lose weight the, really because they'll go yep, out of category yep he, wow. uh, he the, the actual quote was wow. kevin you, when you lose weight you're losing roles wow he actually said that to him when you lose weight when you get healthy no one's gonna like you <laughs> when you get That's healthy, it's not a, it's not possible for you to be this funny unless you're a fat fuck. Okay, so stay a fat fuck so we can all make money, Kevin. When you lose weight, you're losing roles. We're losing money, Kevin. That's so mean. People don't want you're you in there. Die early, but it's, we can use you. It's the worst thing ever because it gave him a green light to to eat to whatever eat. the fuck he wanted. Oh. Kevin, when I first met him, was like a pretty stout character, you know, and he was even thinner and more stout when he was like in high school and. He uh, was really into karate for a while, did a lot of karate, like was yeah. really in good shape. And when he was in really good shape, he was like 200 pounds and just ripped, thick. man. Yeah. yeah, just a tank. Those old pictures of Joey Diaz where you're like, well, who's that? He's a tank. Yeah. yeah. But when he, when a guy tells you shit like that, like you lose w- weight, you're losing roles, you're like giving a guy a green light to just eat whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. You know, that's rude. They're just trying to make money. They're just, it's just idiots. People that want to tell you how you should be. You know, you shouldn't be healthy. There's Kevin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't need an iron anymore. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it is so hot down here, I cannot take it anymore. Although in my room, I have air conditioning, which I love. It's great, because I grew up without air conditioning. It was the worst. My dad was too cheap. He's like, no, oh, Don't do his bits, because he, he probably wouldn't like that. Oh, this yeah. is a Star Search. Old. Yeah. Oh, that was Star, Star Search? Search. Yeah. Two-minute comedy. Yeah. So weird. Yeah, you probably would go, ah, you fucking do my bit. Don't, 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 don't. Please don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Please don't, please don't. You know, you know how comedians are? Like, you take a chunk of their material and put it on. Like, oh, I hate that bit. Don't fucking do that bit. You know? <laughs> but he he would kill me, man. He was really funny. He just, you know, decided to, he got really into making the TV show. Uh, he re- yeah. He really enjoyed the process of uh, oh, really? making a sitcom. Yeah. He's uh-huh. good. At, he's good at that shit. He's good at comedic acting, you know? I just really wish he would really chase comedy more. Stand up. The guy was so funny, man. He used to kill me. When we were kids, we were like in our early 20s together, yeah. and we would do gigs together. He'd we did a fun. lot of gigs together. He was hilarious, man. 
He was a hilarious dude, and he was like real honest about his insecurities and so shit. Cool. So the people, some of the people you started with are actually still around. Yeah, a lot oh, of them man. are still around. Made it. Yeah, a lot of them have made still it. Really doing this. Yeah, like Norton. Norton and I have been friends since fuck, since we were both like twenty one or something like that. Yeah. You know, we're both like forty six. I love seeing somebody in my open mic days. Yeah. I'm like, how you doing? Yeah. Well, Greg Fitzsimmons is my oldest friend ever. Greg Fitzsimmons and I literally went on stage like within a week of each other. Wow. So. Yeah. We were friends in the dark, dark days of open mic nights. We were buddies back when we were, you know, b- b- complete amateurs. Neither one of us. We were terrible. Yeah. We had nothing. So to like be friends so still, friends yeah. to be friends now and see him, like I downloaded the his- The odds of um, making it past six months were, were small. Not, the, not so good for sure. But I, I downloaded his uh, new comedy special. He just has a comedy special that is he that, just put out. Is that the one where he talks about how- how easy Americans have it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's fucking great. Um, but I listened to it yeah. on uh, on the way home from a gig and was laughing my ass off. It was really fucking funny. Yeah. It was really funny. And it was so cool to be able to drive home and listen to, you know, Someone a guy you with. that I started with. Wow. And he's slaying. And even more cool for me for Greg... Because Greg, for a while, was a Greg is a multiple time Emmy Emmy winning writer. Oh yeah, he makes a lot of his money writing. Well, he's like you know he's won Emmys. He's a really good writer. You know he's got a good book as well. But he decided to take some time off of doing stand up. He didn't do stand up for a long time. Oh, it really didn't. I mean, maybe did it occasionally, but he really didn't dive into it like he's back doing now. And then he, after he did it, after he dove back into it, then he put out this special. And so it was. It was like extra cool driving around listening to that special because I knew what he did. I knew how he worked. I knew, you know, I knew that he got back into comedy and I knew that he really loved it again. You yeah. know, it's like a lot of our friends, we talk about that. Like Callan and I have the same conversation every week. Like uh, he was just in some club, but like he did uh, Cap City in Austin. Yeah. And we're on the phone, you know, we're just both in our cars just catching up. And he goes, he goes, it's the greatest fucking job in the world. It's the greatest yeah. fucking job. That I don't want to do anything else. He goes, I do other yeah. things. I don't want to do them. He goes, what <sighs> I want to do is I want to do comedy. I want to tell jokes. It's so fun. And, you know, you watch him on stage. I've had a chance to do some shows with him lately, too. Yeah. And you could see him just really enjoying Enjoy it. This. Having done all these movies and all these TV shows that he didn't really necessarily enjoy because he thought he was supposed to be an actor. Yeah. And then seeing him just murdering with his own silly goose style of comedy because he's so silly, you know? Yeah. It's really fucking great to see, man. <laughs> really great to see. Really funny, funny shit, too, man. Like, having knowing guys, I've known Callan since 94. Really? So I've known Greg since 88. Greg's the my longest running friend in, in comedy. Christ. But Callan and I have been best friends since like the moment we met. You know? I mean, there's like there's like a core group. Wait, you met him in New York? No, I met him out here. I did oh. um Mad TV. Oh, he, he was, was on, on Mad TV and I was the host of Mad TV. He was on 7th Heaven for like a bunch of episodes. Yes, yeah, he did fucking 7th Heaven. And Oz. Don't pull up videos of us on Mad TV. I know what you're doing, you fuck. <laughs> We were children back then, but we became friends like almost immediately. Like we just said, cool. like three or four sentences together, and we were playing, we were just in. hanging out together. Yeah, it's just a fun dude, you know. I knew it's not. It's, it's hard to make fun friends, but it's it's cool when you run into them and you collect them. You know, you're like, oh, I found a good one. It's a good friend. Yeah, and then, add it to the and belt. then you see that guy prosper. You see, you know, that guy growing and developing. Is like, like it's one of the most depressing things when you see a guy who used to do good. Like I don't want to say any names, but yeah. guys that we know that had potential and then they fell off. Yeah. And then they stopped doing comedy altogether. And you're like, my God, we came up together. Like that guy was just as good as me in 1998. Like what it's the like fuck? He died. Yeah, they stopped. Here? They stopped. They stopped doing comedy. And they, yeah. you know, he got a job. Like what? A job. What? Doing what? Why did he? Oh my God. Yeah. Like, why didn't he follow up? It scares everybody else too. They're like, is that a possibility? Yeah. One of the guys we know can just stop. People don't know. They don't understand. And that's why they get angry when I use the word civilian. By the way, people, huh. everyone who gets angry because I use the word civilian to You're describe non comics, go fuck yourself. For real. For real, go fuck yourself. <laughs> You're a civilian. Stop your whining. <laughs> stop your demand for respect. Stop all of it. <laughs> just stop. What? You know what we're talking about, you dummies. We're talking about the difference between someone who understands the fucking hectic, chaotic, mental war you go on in your head. Yeah. When you're being a stand-up comic, we're describing the, the mess of of this life that you will not understand if you don't do it. 
Just like if you're a stockbroker and I'm not, and you call me a civilian, I'm not going to get offended. I wouldn't get offended, by the <laughs> no, way, if yeah, I was I a fucking it, soldier it. either. I wouldn't get offended. You know what people are saying. It's called a figure of speech. Don't be a cunt. Find some other shit to be annoyed Don't at. Don't be a cunt. Don't be a cunt. Find some other shit to be annoyed at. There's plenty of things that are real that you could be annoyed at. Don't be annoyed if somebody uses the term civilian. civilian. It's silly. Did you see that video of a comedian in Tennessee that there was, like, a group in the front row that were, like, wrestlers and stuff like that, like these big guys? Oh, yeah. They start heckling, and then the guy gets on stage and racks him right in the balls. Racks who? The, racks the, the comic? Racks the, the comic. Oh, no. Here's the, here's the video. Oh, I don't want to see this, man. Right? The guy is huge, too. It's uh, Vaudeville Cafe. I don't even know where that is. He hit him in the balls? Yeah, he gets on stage and then racks him. Racks him? Why did you get the word racks? Oh, he told him what it means? Do you know the term? Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I was on stage when you I guess he already did it. Me in the balls. Yeah, that's nice. I feel like next thing you're gonna do is try to like shake my hand and be like. He already did it, I guess. Jesus Christ! Now I feel Why is he still in the room? You guys are so delightful compared to this train wreck over here. Where did he start doing it, man? The one dude just wrote. Hi, this. It's a Not cute. Upright. Uh, okay. But I may be role playing. What does that even mean? Phantom of the Opera? You think I'm role playing the Phantom of the Opera? What a fucking pussy do you think I am? <laughs> Jesus, man. If I'm doing role play, it's Catholic schoolgirl every time, dude. All right. Okay, I don't think I this is it, Brian. Yeah. It, well, find it then. Doesn't <laughs> <this. laughs> so dealing with the heckler. Yeah, that's a fucking. Why was he still in the room? These clubs, like, just all right. They already attacked the comic. Tell him to leave. Yeah, tell him guy, to settle his bill and leave. Guy comes on stage and taps you in the balls. It's over. Show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're just a little too comfortable hitting each other. You know, when you hit each other for a living, like wrestlers do, they fun. slap each other in the face. Yeah. yeah, a regular person does not like that. <laughs> they yeah. don't want to. They don't want to deal with that shit at all. Like, ow. Uh, People who don't respect professional wrestling. Look, you might not enjoy it as uh, a form of entertainment, but you better respect like how hard it is to do. Piper came to the store the other day. Those guys fucking yeah. They sacrificed every part of their They're body. They're all weathered. They're all broken up, man. That is a crazy fucking way yeah. to try to make a living. He's throwing chairs at each other and shit, and jumping off the top rope and fucking doing flips and landing on your face. Yeah, that's some crazy shit, man. That is one of the most like destructive jobs in show business as far as like what it does to your body. Slamming on the ground. Oh, my God. Do you remember the Brock Lesnar one where he did the shooting star press? You know, the, the, he fl did a flip, but he missed the flip and landed on his fucking head. Oh, no, really? Yeah. He was trying to do a flip and, like, pin a guy. Like, he was going to get yeah. on the top rope and do a flip and pin a guy. But he missed. And just bam on his landed head. Landed right on his fucking head. I had Tate slip. Oh, oh, that guy just need him in the balls? You're going to come up on stage. What are you going to do about it? Oh, I'm not backing down, bro. Oh. Oh. He wants to hit him back. I know. He's so... Okay, just I don't want to watch this, man. That's fucked oh, that's up. That's harsh. Yeah, the you shouldn't have left that guy on stage. It. He definitely shouldn't have said, what are you going to do? Like, what's up with that fake bravado? Of having that guy on stage and saying, what are you going to do? And this fucking giant wrestler guy standing in front and of me. Need him the balls. Taunting him. He shouldn't be on stage, first of all, definitely for sure. But, you know, the fucking show is basically Such over. Such a weird point. position now. He's like, oh, what do you, what do you want me to walk away? Well, yeah, you're getting bullied away. by a giant wrestler, too. Yeah. I mean, that guy was twice the size of that guy. Oh. That shit's, I mean. Why does he go back and sit down and nobody throws him out? It's ridiculous. You can't go on stage and knee somebody in the balls and then they don't throw you out. That's like. Bad yeah, why can't you get conditions. sued for that? Why can't you be like this? This random stranger just need me in the balls. That's not part of my job. Yeah, you should be able to sue for that. The club, uh, for for sure, you should be able to sue the guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, the guy for kneeing you in the balls. Well, Tammy had that drink thrown at her, and she tried to press charges, and the sheriff was like, "No, no, it's just comedy." What? And she's like, "He threw a drink at my head. He threw a glass at my head. I want to press charges." That's assault. They didn't bring him in. Uh huh. That's uh, that's insane. Yeah. You so can't mad. throw a glass at somebody. If he hit her, that's a fucking weapon. That's I know, like but he's like, ah, oh, it's just part of comedy. It's like, what do you? Why? Why is it part of comedy? We don't agree to what? that. What? Do you Where, mean? What? What a fucking lazy cop that yeah. is. That's what that is. That's a guy who didn't want to fill out some paperwork. Yeah, I because, wonder where that was with Tammy. Because the actual assault didn't happen. I don't know. Maybe you just know like, because it did actually right, hit her, that. or he's a local and she's not. 
So like, I'm not gonna just arrest somebody over some traveling Local salesman in L.A. Where no, was it wasn't this? here. It was on the road somewhere. Oh, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, where did this take place? It like, must have been some fucking hillbilly. Yeah, shack. I don't know exactly. Texas or somewhere. Uh, Nashville. I don't know. Just making shit up. You just making shit no, up. No, I don't know where Texas it was. Texas and Nashville knowing near each other. It was somewhere. Uh, somewhere Chicago, redneck-y. Canada, something. Somewhere red. Fucking Florida. I don't know something. <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, man, that's not cool. But you know, that's the one of the problems with owning a club. You own a club, you're serving people one of the most ridiculous drinks. Yeah. One of the most ridiculous drugs when it comes to behavior, like <laughs> managing your behavior. Torch lights. You just give people like this drug that makes them want to behave like a fucking asshole. Yeah. Like a good percentage of people want to <laughs> behave like an asshole. On that. On that drug. And then you're selling that. That's what you sell. And you need them to be around. And then you got some guy who's on stage talking mad shit about sucking dicks and shooting cum into people and, and people getting crazy they get crazy they're drunk and someone's talking about sex and crazy talk let's and, go yeah they get nutty and they they just can't believe what they're hearing they they want another drink where's that fucking waitress i want a drink yeah they heard somebody talking loud yeah and there's a lot of that we shut the fuck up like sometimes you hear that well you guys need to shut the fuck up they hear that like in the audience like people arguing with people oh or, yeah somebody else tells them to be quiet because they can't hear last time we were at um for it was uh, duncan and i we're at the uh, Hollywood Improv in Florida. Yeah. And like some people almost duked it out. In because, the audience. Yeah, because one group was talking, the other group turned around. They were like, Will you shut the fuck up? Like a guy like jumped up and he was pointing at this big fucking giant fat guy. Whoa. You shut the Rob Ford looking type character. <laughs> he was screaming at these people and they were screaming back at him. And it was like, wow, in the middle in the middle of the fucking show. You guys are all dis- disruptive. Please yeah. stop that. Yeah, he was getting super angry and loud because the guy behind him was loud. Like, it was more about him than it was even about well, neither the, one come back the show. Down. Like, he, even though there was, like, 300 people there for the show, yeah. like, I understand that this guy is being a dick, but him his yelling made it way crazier for everybody else. Like, he wasn't concerned about that. Like, once the confrontation started, it was it out was of on. his control. Doesn't it was matter. On. Sorry, everybody, but this everybody, is happening. Yeah, everybody else, fuck you. Like the fucking... fight Superman got into. This latest one, just destroying Superman a bunch of buildings. Got into a fight and destroyed buildings? Yeah. That's so stupid. Why doesn't he fight in the desert? If you're Superman, you grab guys, you bring them out in the desert, and you kick okay, their let's ass Let's do it here. There. You don't kick people's ass in the middle of the city, you fucking dummy. You could fly around the world in a second, and you choose to duke it out in the city. In you're New an York. asshole. Yeah. Guilty. Guilty. Next case. <laughs> Send him to the <laughs> That's sun. what I would say. <laughs> if I was a fucking judge and Superman came in and he told me to smash these buildings apart, I'd be like, what? <laughs> Why didn't you take him to the moon? Duke it out up there, you fucking asshole. Oh, yeah. The, that's right. He can I can breathe he wants. up there. Oh, he can go yeah. wherever he wants. He can do anything. <laughs> Superman can fly to space. He's fucking Superman. Yeah, he can. It's, he lives in a different kind of planet, man. I never yeah. liked Superman because of that reason. I'm like, he seems indestructible. Yeah, he's totally so indestructible. Then, like, <sighs> Unless you get that kryptonite. Yeah, I guess. You know what kryptonite is, right? Yeah, what? It's pussy, Woman. for sure. Woman. Yeah, it stands for yeah. pussy. That's what it is. Look, it makes him weak. Yeah. It takes him out of character. He can't make decisions for himself. Yeah, that is what and it eventually is. Eventually, it sucks his power away and he dies. It's Dude, a woman. there's times where you just know you're making the wrong decision. With a woman or with kryptonite? With a woman. And you're just like, oh. Yep. Why am I doing it? Even as you're doing it, you're like, why? It's God. It's because of the yep. pull they have. Yeah. Well, you know what it is, man? Your genes want to spread. Yeah, and, you can't and, help it. And women who have like beautiful bodies, like a woman's body, is yeah. the most incredible magnet for a man. I sort of came a little bit. I'll just wipe it off. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me just get my finger in there and I'm clean sure it out. I would not have made that decision yesterday like this. Yeah. Did I shoot it in her? What? Uh, what? No, I did not. Shit. <gasps> I did it with a black girl, finally. Ooh. Bam. Yeah. Let me pee and then tell me. <laughs> okay. Hold your story. Talk to him about something. How? No, I guess I won't. <laughs> so, wait. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, just so you know, everybody, my next storyteller show is in Los Angeles, February 27th at the Improv. Me, Mark Marin, Ralphie May, Louis Katz so far. Sweet. Yeah, $5. It's a nice show. I like that show. I like the one that you had with uh, Natasha, Bobby Lee, Steve Renazizi, uh-huh. yeah. and you were all talking about the whole thing. <laughs> that was a fun one. Yeah. That's really that was good. a fun one. Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. It was so fun. It's so funny how Bobby can't not be funny. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really good one. Look at this is not happening. Yeah. Go do a YouTube search for that. You'll find it. But yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> Steve eventually just lost control. So he's just like, oh, whatever. Keep going. I like when Bobby lies. And then when you both, when you say, no, you were wrong, and somebody else says you're wrong, he'll go, oh, okay, all right. I was lying. <laughs> yeah. It was really cool because I've heard that story so many times, but never actually seen like a Natasha around yeah, there. Yeah, all of us like, and the, together. When she brought up the water thing, I could tell <laughs> you were like, oh, I did do that. Like, I'm sorry about. <laughs> 
People ask about who was right, who was wrong. It was like, it doesn't matter. I'm just embarrassed about my behavior. I don't care about who else's behavior. <laughs> yeah, because you dumped a water glass on her head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heartbreak, man. It gets you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, San Jose Improv, March, middle of March. And uh, again, Chicago Zanies this weekend. I love that place. I was just there. And go across San the street improv? to that. Uh, yeah, in- Improv. Go across the street to that there's dab a, place. There's a museum right there, too. Yeah. But San been, Jose Improv yeah. down the street from Joe's. Joe's, mm, yeah. What's that called? What's it original called? Joe's? Original Joe's. Original Joe's, yeah. Original yeah, that Joe's. was good later. Oh, 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 they have like a real wood grill for steaks there. Oh. Yeah, they have like real wood coals. They put lump charcoal underneath the steak. It's a charcoal broiler, a real really? broiler. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Dude, you could watch them if you get a seat by the bar. We went there once with two fighters. We've been there a bunch of times, right? John Fitch yeah. and... Yeah. And Mike Swick. Yeah. That was when Mike Swick was telling us about how he used to work for uh, the United States government. He was working in Russia, and their buildings were bugged. The, the Russians bugged the buildings with incredibly sophisticated equipment. That, yeah. And he was like, they were so far ahead of what we were capable of. He said they had bugs that were operating on the power generated by the movement of the building in the breeze. Wow. What? Uh, they figured out a way to, to generate right enough power to keep the microphones going and, wow. and transmitting, transmitting, like producing energy. And they got it from the movement of the fucking swaying of the building. He was like, they were so far ahead of us. Why were they bugging his room? They were bugging the, the con- whatever oh, building I, he was working okay, at, government okay. building he was working at. What people don't wow. realize is the, the, the Soviet Union, like during yeah. the Cold War, like during the advancement of um, their, their rocket program along with our rocket program, yeah. they got the first fucking guy in orbit, man. Oh, right. I mean, they were incredibly advanced. They and you think some... that's one of the reasons we made up the moon landing? Well, I don't think we made up the moon landing. I've, you don't? I've, I've changed my position on what? that. What? Yeah. What? I, yeah, this is what I think. <laughs> I think... Um, Give me my hours back. <laughs> How dare you? How you dare owe you? us five years. You have to figure it out. <laughs> okay. You have to figure it out. You can't figure it out initially. If I think... If you watch that Fox show, watch the Fox show on yeah. uh, the moon landings. It's very compelling. It's very compelling. It's a really interesting... Saying how it is real? Well, saying it's not real. Oh. Um, but the odds of that being true, it's so small. It's like, I don't know what happened, but if I had to guess what happened, I would say they went to the moon. And I would say, when you look at some of the photos that like look like they're staged, and the fact that all of them were centered, there very well could have been some counterfeit photos. They definitely did a little bit of that back then in NASA. Yeah. Like, there was a photo from Gemini, uh, I believe it was Gemini 15, it was Michael Collins, and they took a photo of him in training with these wires and this harness on, and then they blacked out all the wires in the background and then s- used the same photo and said that he was in space. Really? That it was doing a spacewalk. Like, who's taking his picture during a spacewalk? Nobody. It oh, wasn't a yeah. real photo. Oh, there was nobody fuck. out there with a fucking camera just walking with him. photos, so we didn't know that It was a yet. fake photo. It just, yeah. They didn't think that people were going to think that many steps ahead. So I think there, it's very possible that they might have faked some things, like some photographs might have been on a sound stage for or publicity and stuff. There, yeah, for publicity oh, right. and to make sure that they got a record of yeah, it. Like John Kerry showed those pictures of Syria of all the dead bodies, and it was from like five years, five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Dude, my favorite quote though is Clinton's quote about it. Clinton talked about that? when he was a kid. He was working for a carpenter, and you know the guy said that he didn't believe anything on television. That those television fellers can put things on TV and uh, make you think it's real. Yeah. Uh, and he said back then I thought that guy was a quack, but or a crank. But during my eight years in the White House, I saw things that made me think that maybe he was ahead of his time. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's a Clinton quote wow. on the moon landing. Do you think they tell each president like, "Here's what, let's catch you up on the on yeah the moon landing stuff." Um, or do you think they don't even, don't even tell them? Why would they want to tell them? Well, if if it really was fake, which again I don't necessarily think it was, I, I think it's more likely that there's some fuckery involved in some of the evidence because you know they were trying to create things that were used for publicity. And there's some some video that looks really fucking hokey. There's like there's this video of them jumping around like they're on trampolines when they're on the moon. Yeah, it's really weird. It's really weird stuff because the, the 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 there's no consistency. 
and like the way they move. Like if you watch the earliest video from Apollo 11 when they're walking on the moon, you watch their movement and then watch the the later stuff. It's like they move a little differently. Like they can do weird shit like they can jump and fly through the air, you know, later in the uh, you know, in the in the videos. Like they got better at whatever they were How'd doing. How'd you get better at walking in the in space? Well, it's just weird. So I think that it might very well be that some of the footage that you look at, it's possible, and I'm not suggesting that we didn't go to the moon. I know I have in the past, but yeah. what I'm suggesting is some of the footage might be fake. It's possible. They, they used to do that kind of stuff back then. I know we don't like to think that, but they did a lot they of stuff like that. They still do it now. Uh-huh. They still do it now. They still fake things now. It's they had good. billboards of Martin Luther King with white women. Oh, with sure. billboards in the South. Just of course they did. Photos. Meanwhile, B- Martin Luther King fucked a lot of white women. How about that? Wow. How about he loved it? Who wouldn't? You're Martin Luther King. Yeah, I bet he did. So he probably knew he was going to die. Just get on a rampage. Get that white pussy. What's this black girl like 5 p.m. or 2.30 a.m.? What does that mean? The color. Oh. Like 5 p.m. This is a starter black. Oh, okay. This is definitely shit. Okay, she wasn't. I mean, for me to go in full bore, that's kind of crazy. Right. She was not from this country. She was from like uh, the uh, England or like the, or the, or the. um, She had an English accent? Jamaica-ish, yeah. And like raised there, yeah. Wow. Real white, real not hip hoppy at all. Hip hoppy. Yeah, it was a very starter. Like, just get in there. Was she half black? No, I mean, you know, they're all black. Did you know what the it? fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say black. it like that, man. Did the vagina seem any different to you? Any colors? Any shapes? Uh, taste? Surprisingly similar to white pussy. <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> shocking, actually, how similarly shaped and feeling it was. What's the same? They're human beings. Yeah. Sorry. How dare? But you? then it got weird when she she snored, and it was like, oh, oh no. so manly. And I oh, had trouble no, after that. No, 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 no. It's such a manly good. way to sleep. Watching your dick go into that pink hole, though, with the co- contrast with the black, is such a cool sight, though. It really is. Like if you have a darker one, when you because they, they are like just bright pink inside, like, a, pink, like center. A pink starburst. If you, if you have a darker one, <laughs> this is medium, not what women want to hear. It's a medium rare. <laughs> These are not the kind of things that women want to hear. <laughs> it's like a blackened steak with a medium rare inside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. The inside, <laughs> yeah. pink. Yeah. So good for you. Thanks. I'm adding I'm, diversity that, to your sexual, exactly. I sexual am uh, life. Br- broadening my horizons. I think uh, a lot of people would salute you for that. Yeah, I'm also <laughs> dating chicks a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. It's Why hard, is that right? weird? It's hard, right? Yeah, to go on like full dates and like oh, let's just try to explore you as a person instead of like you get bored. Try to get it laid. It just seems like let's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? The conversations you're having. Yeah, you in my mean? head, I'm like, come on, let's just go back and fuck. Wow. Before you have. Wow. No, I don't say that out loud. That's what I think. But that's what you think. You don't yeah. really want to talk to them. You just want to fuck them. Yeah. So I want to get to the point where I'm like, no, let's enjoy a new human and fucking enjoy them for a minute. So you're trying to mature. You're yeah, trying maybe. To, uh, to, to find women that you actually like as people and not just as sexual uh, partners. Yeah. But if you get some just purely sexual partners, then you can do that. Then you can afford to explore with a, with a woman. That's true. Yeah. Once your needs are met, which are many. Yeah. The biological needs. <laughs> Funny needs yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird thing where you're supposed to not be able to say that. But a woman is allowed to say that. If a woman right. says that, you know, hey, you know, I take these men and uh, I let them know, look, we're just here. To, I'm here to fuck. Okay. I'm busy. I've got a career. You can fuck me. And then when you're done, you got to go home. You know, the man's not going to argue with the that. The guy would be like, okay. <laughs> but if a guy says that, it's like, you fucking asshole, you creep. Yeah. Could you imagine if there was a hot woman who, like, you know, ran a business or something like that? And she, whatever. She makes fucking sculpture. She says, any time, but she needs to get laid. Yeah. So she says, listen, Ari, here's the deal, okay? I like you. I think you're hot. I want to fuck. But I don't want you being my boyfriend. I don't want you hanging around. You can't sleep over. And don't ever fucking tell me what to do, <sighs> okay? But oh. if you want no strings attached, you come over and fuck me. I'll suck your dick, and we'll have a good time. And then when we're done, you leave. You'd be like, okay, okay, okay. I'll do that for you. Okay, okay. Right You'd be like, yes, yes. I found her. <laughs> the unicorn. I knew she was out there. <laughs> I knew she was out there. You know, <laughs> it's um. I was having this discussion with uh, one of my wife's friends who happens to be gay, and they were talking about um, the difference between two gay guys like hooking up, yeah. and gay guys meeting and hooking up, and a guy and a girl. Meeting and hooking up. Yep. But a guy and a girl are trying to figure out how much yin are we going to have in this? How much yan? Yeah, they're who's all gonna, fighting for a position. Yeah, who's going who's gonna to be in control here? Setting it up. Is the girl, girl going to tell you what to do and answer your phone for you? <laughs> or is you know is she going to leave you alone and let you be you? Are you going to leave her alone? Are you going to let her wear whatever she wants and not get fucking weird with her? You know, what's going to happen here? Are you going <laughs> to say, well, you, are you really going to go out with that skirt? 
You really gonna go out that skirt for real? You're setting oh my up god, it's down to my knees. It's not to your fucking knees. It's not to your knees. It's not to your knees. Okay, I see your legs. God, do you really need that much attention? You know, there's there's that there's yeah. that dude, and then there's people that are like, oh, you look hot, baby. Have fun. Have a good time. Right. You know, who are you gonna be? And who? What, what's she gonna ha- be happiest with? You're what are you gonna be happiest that early with? On. Yeah, it's also finding someone who's like brings out the best in you. Oh yeah. Like sometimes. You could have relationships that bring out the worst in you. You like hate Salt who you at are. Today, mm-hmm. Fighting in each other's oh, face, leaning forward, so leaning gross. forward. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so not necessary for any of us to do. It's just not. You know, any of us that are involved in altercations, like so much of it is, uh, it's it's both people's responsibility. You know, there's a dance going on when two people are communicating with each other, and a lot of times we're shitty dance partners. Yeah, sometimes I feel like telling people, like, look, it doesn't, it's nobody's fault, but you guys are never going to work because you just entered into this too much. You're just too fighty. It's so also some people happen. like it, man. That's a yeah. that's a source of drama in their life. They don't even realize it. It's completely subconscious, but they yeah. like to duke it out. They like it. Some they like to like fucking drama. hate it. I don't like it with anybody. I don't like it with friends. I don't like it with girlfriends. I don't like it with anyone in business. I don't like it with other comics. I don't like it, man. It's not fun. I would way rather be friendly with everybody. Yeah. Well, it's way easier that way. It is <laughs> way, way easier. easier. It's It makes everybody feel nicer, but there's moments, man, where you'll run into people. You're like, God damn it. I got to fucking like, defend my position here. I got to like stay afloat here. Like, I got to go, dude, shut the fuck up and leave me alone. Like, there's a moment where you have to, like, say something or be, uh, uh, like, assertive with someone. Just yeah. get them to fucking leave you alone. It can, there's, dude, there's people that just don't get it. They would just fuck with you till the end of time. They're just so goofy and clunky. They just don't get it. I had an argument once at a party. This guy was trying to tell me that the UN rapes children in Africa. Rapes them? This, yeah, was, he was telling me that they rapes them for apples. That's what he was saying. What? what? And it was the dumbest conversation. Wait, he rapes them so other people give them apples for, like, job well They're done? They're giving them apples to fuck them, he was oh. saying. It was like they raped them for apples. He was saying it was oh. rape. The guy was just such a douchebag. He was um, the, he was a country music guy who wound up getting arrested for cocaine dealing. He's like a singer in this really terrible country music band that my really? friend knew. Yeah, and he was like this shut super that loud. pro rah rah American guy, but in a, the most idiotic way possible. And uh, you know, he was. They were talking about you know, like the, the United States, what they're doing over in Afghanistan, and this and that. And he was, he just going on about the UN raping people for apples. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, what? How can you? First of all, if you give someone an apple, it's prostitution. It's not rape. If yeah. You give them an apple, and you fuck. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's. Like, it's not best best prices in the world. But. Rape you with an apple, unless you're fucking someone with an apple. You're not really raping them for apples. Unless it's a MacBook Pro, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. yeah, if you can get a MacBook Pro, and all you have to do is just fuck How one good? guy. That seems like really good one, plus. One techie. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you this I mean, MacBook Pro. whatever it was, it wasn't just that. It was just the way this guy was just so aggressive with me. It was just like, there's such a point, and he put his hands on me, like on my shoulder, and said, oh, it's okay. Like, look at me in the eye, saying, it's okay. I understand. You just hate America. I understand. You just hate. Oh, and so I, dismissive. I, when people get like, dismissive, it's putting like, his hands fuck on you. Me, I was like, dude, get your fucking hands off me. Like and that's when it turned ugly. I was like, "You got to get your fucking hands off me! Don't touch me, dude! Don't touch me and talk crazy." So you hate America? Well, uh, like, what, because I questioned it? it. He had escalated it to not just that I hate America, but that he was gonna like do some weird alpha shit to me yeah. and like hold on to me. You know, it was really gross. That but does was... that does push it up a level when somebody touches you or like mm-hmm. like pats you in the head. You're it was like, a oh, long doing, time man? ago, by the way. It was a long time ago. Who knows if I would have ever even entered into that conversation. Today, I don't think I would. I think today I'm much more skillful in the art of evading nonsense. <sighs> I would have known what it was. I Possible kn- upside? None. None. I would have I've known. But back then, I would be like, fuck this guy. He fucking touched me. You know, it was like I was ready to kill him. I, it was just, it was the most ridiculous guy ever. Like those people in your show. You run into them, man. You, oh, some of the uh, sci fi people? No, the people mean? yelling, um, shut the fuck up. It's like it's on now. It's like you didn't have to say that. Oh, oh, involved. the people at the comedy show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, you know. The only way to know that you shouldn't go too far is to I see the results far. of going too far, either I by yourself Fitzsimmons or that. other people. When he gets in those arguments, I'm like, Greg, yeah. you could have just walked away. And you oh, Greg's ready to name. fight everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's ready to fist fight people. He's very competitive, too. When I did uh, Doug Loves Movies in San Diego, it was me and Greg Fitzsimmons, and, and he took it as a game, and like he thought I wasn't taking it serious enough. He could tell mm. immediately, like, no, man, we're in a game right now. Like, I was like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he plays good pool. They kicked me out of my apartment because I let him stay in my apartment while I was in Australia. 
And they're like, no, no sublets. I'm like, it's not a sublet. It's just a friend of mine who needs a place to stay, so I'm just letting him stay there. They're like, no, it's not allowed. I'm like, well, I'm going to keep doing that because it's my friend. I can, I can do that. And she left me a note. Fucking get out. How? That's ridiculous. Yeah. It'd How be best if that? you leave it. It wasn't an official eviction. It was just like, we suggest you leave. Why? Because I don't know. I think she had a really good heart on for people subletting or something. I don't get it. People are weird with their confrontations. I mean, some of them are necessary, but there's guys like Eddie Ift. Yeah. He's a perfect example. That motherfucker, every time you talk to him, he's got some new he's got story a new fight about with somebody. almost yeah, getting yeah. So we're out in the parking lot, and I'm like, fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you. You guys want to go? Let's go right now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Why did it get to there? You're fighting in a parking lot in the middle of the night, and everyone's drunk. Don't he hangs out with people that all are like that also. Really? Like, like, there's also this Chris Wilde guy. I don't know if you know him or not. He's yeah. like fighting with Tony Hinchcliffe right now on his show. Like, they're battling out. And... On what show? What do you mean by battling? Uh, like, uh, they... Eddie has, has a show, uh, Talking Shit or whatever it's called now, and uh, there's a guy that's always on the show called Eddie Ift. And it's, you know, Eddie Ift is or not, our friend. I mean, not Eddie Ift, but uh, Chris Wilde. Yeah, I know Tony, Wilde. Tony was on the show also with this guy. Didn't know him, you know, just thought it was a friend of his. And then uh, I guess what happened is, like, the Wilde guy was, like, kind of mad that he, Tony didn't know who he was or kind of, like, upset or something. And then they kind of went back and forth on the show. But now, like, I guess he's just, Chris Wilde won't let it drop and has been, like, tweeting uh, things to Tony and stuff. And it's just, I don't know if you know Chris Wilde or not. No, I don't know him, but who cares? Yeah, he, just little, he used to know. have a TV show. I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah. I can't really comment. I don't right. know what the specifics of it were, but but I'm on Team Tony Hinchcliffe always, <laughs> all day, all Who's day. Who's that chick son. over there? That's Rosa Parks, son. That's Rosa Parks. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. Really yarmulke. Um, I don't think that's a yarmulke. Dude, she's so light hair. skinned. She's more light skinned than Jimi Hendrix. It's like that as light as you fu- you fucked. It's hard to tell in that photo. No, I, I mean, went a little darker than that. Black and white photo. So is the Hendrix photo. It's a black yeah. and white photo. That's Toronto. He got busted for heroin, son. Had heroin. I went to visit his, uh, his his childhood home in Vancouver. They have a small shrine to him. Really? Yeah. Wow. Me and Jeff Ross and Big Jay Okerson went there one year. Imagine that. Dude died at 27, 28 years old. Was he 27 oh, or 28? 27. 27. 27 years old and he's got a shrine. You, yeah. Where's your shrine, bitch? I don't have a shrine. How come you ain't got no shrine in, in yeah, D.C.? It's a good question. It's a you good make, question. That should be your goal. A lot of people want like HBO specials. Mm-hmm. You should have a fucking want a shrine. shrine. <laughs> An Ari Shafir shrine. Ari the Great. <laughs> Was born here. That's right. Ari the, Ari the Great. Uh, was born here, like Babe Ruth's house. Escaped from the mediocrity of his mother's pussy. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> I should just make my own shrine. Go to NYU, Why not? You Manhattan could, Hospital. You could it write was. it. Like, have you ever read someone's bio on their uh, website? You know they wrote it themselves, and it makes you want to fucking throw <laughs> yes. up. My oh, friend Avi Lerner lives in a part Christ. of like near Washington D.C. where people have historic th- houses things, and mm-hmm. he just made one up. A made up of a historic house. Yeah, it was like a stop on the Underground Railroad or like something like that. He just made it up. Did he apply for it? Like it made it a real. Uh... I don't know exactly how he did it. If he like went to the city, I'm like, this happened here, so if he could get a plaque, or if he just bought a plaque and stuck it there. Oh, okay. Probably mostly bought a plaque, right? He, it would be really hard to like pass that get through the them. city to tell him like. Yeah, they'd be like, wait a minute, unless you were like, or it was like super. Yeah, convincing. it was like some writer stayed here when he mm-hmm. was visiting. Well, there's probably a, b- a bunch of places that do kind of qualify for that. Like, for instance, yeah. like um, Stephen King has a house in in Maine, in Bangor, Maine. Yeah. And like that house should be a historical house, in he my did so opinion. Much writing there and setting it there. Not just that. Like that was his house for so long, and it's like he's got these wrought iron gates that have these bats on them and shit. It's oh, a cool. really dope ass house, and it's in the middle of this town of Bangor, Maine. And everybody knew about it. And he's such a legendary writer that that house to me is like that's like an iconic house. So you'd put like you know? a historic yeah, preservation like make on it, there. make it a fucking museum for yeah. Stephen King fans could come in and see. This is the desk that he actually wrote, you know, some of his novels at. I love those little museums across that the country. That would be dope, dude. Be cool. I'll tell you, man, if they did that, they would pay for that house a dozen times over. Just let people Think go so? and see. Fuck yeah, I would, I would. I would pay if I was in Boston and I knew I could fly up and just check out the desk where Stephen King wrote The Shining. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah, I would look at that thing. Wow. It just, I want. I just want to be in the room. This is where he wrote Cujo and he didn't remember it. Soak it in. Yeah, this is where you know. What do you mean? Remember? He did so much coke and drank so much booze. He didn't even remember writing it. Stephen King didn't rem- did coke. Oh my God! Did he do coke? Wow. Stephen King was a maniac. Wow. Stephen he just King jumped up so many cool points. Smoke cigarettes. <laughs> First do massive amounts that. of coke and really? drink beer. And he would drink like 16, 17 beers a night Ugh. and just write until he blacked out and then fall asleep and then get up in the morning and coke it up and just do what? it again. Yeah, he was a maniac. Wow. He, he wrote a Cujo, a frothing at the mouth dog. Mm-hmm. Doesn't remember any of it. Oh, it was yeah. all him. He was mm-hmm. Cujo. 
who knows? I mean, I'm sure there were some analogies in there somewhere between a lot of his demons and the, the yeah. actual demons he was experiencing by being a, an, an addict. But he was getting addicted to. Uh, I heard his cocaine. on writing or whatever the book is. It's great. It's I heard it's amazing. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I've got two copies of it in case I really? lose one. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it's really good. It's wow. really good. It's it's he's an he's a master to me, you know, and uh, a master uh, of a specific type of. Oh, that uh, genre was him. Yeah. Well, it's a specific type of entertainment that I really enjoy. Like complete fantasy, yeah. Vampires and demons and spaceships with aliens, and I love that shit. I, I love, love the it. short stories. Yeah, I, I, dude, I, I love all that stuff. I'm a huge, huge Stephen King fan. To me, he's like he made the world a cooler place. Yeah. He made, <laughs> yeah, he made a, the world a, a place with the movie Carrie. You know, with the book Carrie, with Christine, that movie about the haunted car. That was a fucking great movie, man. He wrote that book too, which is even better than the movie. Yeah. Christine was a lot of yeah. them were. Oh, he was just the, the books are too long. There's too much detail. Too much. You would like to have seen it all in the movie, but it's impossible. The movie's got to be two hours. They, or whatever they got like a lot of shitty actors. A lot of those movies, though, like Salem's Lot. Yeah, they got a lot of like. Let's just do this for forty grand. Yeah, well, those is. I think Salem's Lot was for television. I think that oh, was really? made for television. Oh, God, that was, was a it? Bad one. That was a bad. Was one. it Sal- was Salem's yes. Lot made for television? I think it was. Yes. Um, then there was St- the Silver Bullet movie, the Silly Werewolf movie. Oh, yeah. With, uh, Corey Haim, remember? Oh, yeah. Oh. But then he also wrote fucking Stand By Me. Yeah. Which is so out of his, mm-hmm. uh, his genre. Yeah, yeah. No, but, he could write anything, man. Yeah. He could write anything. He's a bad motherfucker, dude. And then he followed those, uh, those, uh, uh, minor, not minor league, Cub Scout baseball players. What are they called? It's a little, little leagues. He followed one, like, started writing articles with them, and they went all the way to the Little League World Series. Really? While he was following them, writing about them. Oh, I didn't know from about like this. Bangor, like the Bangor main team went to like the Nationals or something. Oh, and he was like writing in their local paper about them. Yeah, just following them along that season. <laughs> That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah, well, it must be awesome for those guys. Well, he could do whatever he wants. You he know? could do whatever he wants, man. He didn't have to apologize to anything to anybody. Yeah, he's an interesting cat, Stephen King, for sure. And he's really like giving in the way he communicates, like his ideas. You should have him on your podcast. I would love to. I would love to. He's interesting in the way he like communicates, uh, you know, how he goes through his process. He's super honest about it. And he's one of the rare guys that doesn't have like a set up like story in uh-huh. his head. He like has these characters and he has this idea that he starts with and then he just goes. Just he writes. just starts writing. He just starts writing, almost like goes into this crazy trance, trance and, yeah. and and constructs this world and then you get sucked into it and then you read it after he's done with it and you're like, Holy shit. <laughs> You know, he just brings it out of nowhere. It's not like, like we had uh, Scott Sigler on the podcast, who's a really cool guy and a very, very good writer as well. But he has a totally different approach. Scott Sigler's approach is he knows exactly where he's going. He knows yeah. where, he, where it's going to end. He knows where this is going to happen and get changed up. He knows where this, and then he has to just sort of fill it in and figure With it out, and flesh it out. Yeah, and you know, make it to his liking. But he he's very systematic about it. And we were talking about Stephen King's approach that he just just lets it go. And that, ah, you know, I just don't do it that way. I couldn't do it that way. But for him, obviously it worked. But for Segler's a great writer, too. I mean, his way works, too. There's no right or work or, or wrong uh, way to do it. Yeah. Do you write like that? Do you, like, say, I want to write a no, joke man. about driving a car? No, I'll toss things over my head. I'll write a note in my notebook. And then, like, when I look to see what jokes I should do on stage tonight or whatever, I'll mm-hmm. keep passing that note. I'll keep thinking about it. And then when I'm driving or when I'm on the subway, I'll like, keep thinking it over. And then I'll just, like... Do it on stage. So but, you don't actually sit in front of the computer. Uh-uh. How come you don't? Do you try that? I've never. I've never. I've tried it. I've done it before, but it's never really stuck. I just kind of think things out in my head. I just let my mind wander. I think never you should. Written. I think you should write blogs. I think yeah. you, would, you would have some fucking hilarious blogs, dude. And it gives you the thing about writing blogs is it gives you like an opportunity to spend a lot of time thinking about a subject. Because in the time that it takes you to write it and type it out, you have to think a lot more. You're thinking a lot more, yeah. and you're thinking a lot more in the containment of a particular subject. So, like, yeah, if you're it's talking, forcing you to actually do the thinking. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's forcing you to focus on one particular subject too. And sometimes, just that extra focus is all you need to get that extra yeah. path that you take off that mm. bit. Like, you know, how sometimes you find a bit. Like, I don't know if it's this way for you, but for me, it is at least. I'll have an initial direction, and then. Along the way, I realized that's not the right direction. Yeah. The, right adre- the right direction is one of the other p- taglines, and then I'll go and towards the original that. Original just dies. Tur- yeah, yeah, totally absolutely. turns yeah, it, it on its head. Yeah, just something else. Yeah, totally turns it on its head. I find that those take place more when I sit down and write things. Oh, like really? Completely write things. Yeah, because I give myself more more paths. Like, say if you're talking about, um, 
lava lamps, whatever. Okay. And you're going on a lava lamp path. When while you're on that path and you're writing it out, instead of just thinking about it in your head, when you're forced to actually mash those keys and form a sentence in the correct way, like yeah. you're going to read it to somebody, you know, oh, that Shrivener? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dope. What's that? It's a writing software program. That has, like, you can't see it. Yeah. You can't see it. It's a cork board with index cards on it, but mm -hmm. a virtual cork board. And you uh, can put your notes on those uh, virtual cork boards. Oh, that's good. Evernote sucks. There's some, yeah, Evernote. Well, I like Evernote because it they lets lose me sync stuff. Up to it. They don't lose stuff for me. They, they lose, lose stuff. stuff for you? They lose yeah. stuff. Yeah. Really? I've never... been, I looked and it's been written about. They lose stuff for you too. Really? Yeah. You been? It's been written about online. Yeah. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Never. I think more people sh would benefit from uh, blogs. blogs. Yeah, that's why I've written some of my best stuff. So I'm I'm uh, gonna start going back into blogs. I'm gonna commit to uh, one blog a week. Really? Yeah. And then what? You won't mind doing material out of your blogs? Nope, I don't mind doing that because it becomes an idea. Like it's an idea in the blog, and then it becomes a bit a full thing. Well, it's either that or you don't get the blogs. Right. You know, it's like. I think people like to read things, and I think uh, that some of them are never going to go to see my stand-up. Super fans will get to see the germinations of, them, of these ideas. Yeah. And if you don't like it, that's okay. I get it. I mean, I've heard people complain about subjects that we talk about on the podcast that eventually But it's like that's what's on your material. mind. The problem is that's what's on your mind, so I'm going to do it on stage what's on my mind. It's also the problem that some people are just annoying cunts that like to complain <laughs> yeah. about shit, and they get to talk, too. Everybody gets to talk. You know, it's one of the, the beautiful things about the Internet and one of the annoying things about the Internet yeah. is that even people that are not thoughtful, that are all fucked up and really, you know, hypercritical and annoying and not rational about it, they get to talk to. Yeah. There's a guy who it was a he was a video game guy that uh, just quit social media, Clippy media B. quit his uh, Twitter. No, it wasn't Cliffy B. It was another guy. He he's like uh, famous for making YouTube videos. And yeah. there was this thing that they were uh, going over his uh, career and uh, his his like constant battling with people on these social network sites. And when people would say mean things about him, he couldn't help it. He He'd had to respond. Yeah. He would get involved in these crazy fights. And then he had started having his uh, employees handle his Twitter for him, and that relieved him of his a little bit of his anxiety. Then he got to a point where he's like, I'm not. I can't fucking do it anymore. Like I'm going crazy. I have like real health problems. Yeah. The stress of this. You know, um, when you start, like, looking for that shit and reading that shit and getting into that shit, it can fuck with your head, man. Oh, yeah. If you, if you do something that people don't like and they all start attacking you for it, attacking you as a human being and trying to, like, hurt your feelings. Yeah. There's not just one. There's, like, 20 of them in a day. What was that about, though? What is what about? What is those people doing that? No, no. Why would you say that? Oh, because this guy did that. He quit. He quit his uh, all his social media to get away from it. Yeah, he just couldn't take it anymore. I mean, he makes his living off his YouTube channel. I mean, he's got, like this huge YouTube channel, like people, like millions and millions of subscribers, and he's got a huge, you know, huge Twitter following, hundreds of thousands of Twitter anymore. people. Deleted it all. Yeah, because he just couldn't take it anymore. Good for him, it's take his life. The, I know it is his life, but it's interesting, like that that battle, yeah. you know, with the the criticism and and, oh, and, right. and and negative people online. Like I released that, I released that. I was worried, but I released my album online with with commentary. I put it on my podcast. Why were you worried? Well, because I was worried that someone would say the only worry was like someone's going to say like, oh, this is just lazy because he didn't want to do another podcast episode this week. Mm -hmm. And that first comment was. Lazy, and I'm like motherfucker. Oh, but that was the only one. But it was like the first one. I was like, God damn it! You can't listen to those people. Those people are shitheads. Yeah. You know, you can't tell me that it I'm bothers me to though. Be... If somebody tells me like, oh, I saw this joke last time or whatever, it's like, mm -hmm. it just bothers me. Well, you need to let them know. Look, I'm working on jokes, and the only way to work on jokes is you got to do them more than once. Yeah. A, a bit is never finished unless it's done. 20, 30, 50, depending on the bit. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be done a lot of times. You have to do it on stage and perform it and tweak it and move it around. And if you think that, like, you know, you go to see me in this town, then you go to see me in another town, and it's going to be a totally different act a month later, it's not possible. It's crazy. I yeah. need to work on that stuff. Like, um, a lot of my stuff that I've released in the past, I wish I'd worked on it more. I wish I'd spent more time going over it. And yeah, but that requires new people to come, I guess. Yep. Well, it also requires you have to do it on stage. You know, I had Everlast on the podcast yesterday. We were yeah. talking about the difference between writing a song and writing a joke. Like, I've never made a joke without the help of other people because right. every joke I make, better. it has to be done in front of an audience, and they let me know what's working. It's yeah. a, it's a combined effort. It just is. I can't. I mean, I'll write some good ideas that'll work the first time I get on stage, 
but they get better when you do them in front of an audience and you figure them out. And you got to take chances. You got to do them this way and you got to move the punchline. It tells really good at that, changing like an order. Real, mm -hmm. real quick. Let me examine each of these a bunch of different ways. You never know, man. Sometimes yeah. you nail one and it's just the perfect way to say it and you can't believe you used to say it another way before. Yeah, pause right. And some suck, man. You know, Chris Rock uh, famously talks about um, his one of his greatest bits of all time. You know that bit um, that I love black people and I hate niggers. Yeah, remember that bit? Uh -huh. One of the that's one of the all time he got a lot of criticism classic. For that. He certainly did. Yeah, but it's one of the all time classic, classic bit. comedy bits. Yeah. It's just a brilliant bit. Well, he said that that bit bombed. Louis C.K. told me this. He said that the bit bombed for like a year. Really? Couldn't get it to work right. And then figured finally, he figured out how to get it right. He figured just figured out how to do it right. Yeah. But he believed in it. He believed in the premise, so he chased the premise down until yeah. he got to a point where it was just a weapon, you know. And then when the, by the time it was on a special, it's just flawless that bit. That bit's so classic. Yeah, it's, like, it's a legendary bit. It's legendary a, it's bit. A, uh, yeah. But that's a perfect example of it's like a legacy bit. You can't do that if you want to hear the same jokes every week, <sighs> oh, right. or uh, same. Uh, you want, what, rather, you want to hear show. new jokes every show because you're never going to get to that level. Dude, of, it was really great bit. doing going in New York. We do four, five, six spots a night, and if you work on one bit and you do one, you go, you get that feeling of like oh, I was a little dead in the middle there. wasn't enough laughs. Mm -hmm. But then usually I wait 24 hours before attacking it again. And I sort mm -hmm. of forget. This time. It's 40 minutes later. I'm doing it again. I'm like, oh, it's still weak in the middle there. So then on the subway, I'm like, I got to write something. Mm -hmm. And then you don't. still weak in the middle. The next thing you do, and then you're like, well, that was okay. Maybe mm -hmm. that'll work. You try something else. And by the end of the night, you're like, I've, I've fi fixed this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It was almost like a dilapidated house. So you're like, I've done some work on it now. Sometimes when I'm in a bit that's not really working, I try to think of myself, like when I'm writing especially, I try to think of myself as instead of making a bit, Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to turn it and figure out a way to make it bit, just figure out a way to just express what's going on in what you're talking about. What is actually going on? Add a bunch of shit to it that's not necessary in the writing aspect of it. Like write a bunch of shit out. Talk about the whole thing. Read what do you mean, like, like, whatever like, the subject describe is. Describe the building or whatever. Describe what you know emotions you were having. Describe how embarrassed you felt. Describe why you were embarrassed. Add a bunch of shit you know you're never going to say on now. stage. Oh, a bunch okay. of shit. Like go way too far. And then look at it and go, and just start cherry picking. And then right. go, oh, but this this makes sense. If I could cut that out and go right to this, and you'll sometimes you just give yourself yeah. more. Yeah, by going too far. My acting teacher would tell us that, like, if people weren't going even close to far enough, they'd be like, "Why did you cheat on me?" He was like, "You're uh, not, uh, you're uh, not uh, going far enough." Like, uh, I'm pretty upset. Like, it doesn't look like that. And he would always go, "Just do it like ten times too much, just for argument's sake. Let me just right. see that." And the people would do it. He goes, "Okay, pull that back, like." Like 3%. Like you're just barely over the line. Right. Like that's where you should be. You got to take chances and people don't want to take chances. And that's one of the things that is the hallmark of bad acting. Yeah. That's people I know. that don't really want to dive into yeah. and become someone else. They're still clinging on to who they are. What are you talking about? You're not even going in there. Yeah. Like, they don't even know how to be. I noticed Freddie would do that. When he would like really do his dad getting exasperated, he would lift his hand all the way up over his head. Like, why are you doing this? Right. Like that. And then you see like new open micers trying something similar. And their hand would come up about their side. They'd be like, oh, why are you doing that? They yeah. just didn't have the, the guts to stick with it to just go for it. There's a commitment. Because it's so foolish if you fail like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, it's way worst. more foolish. Oh, we've all done that. We've overcommitted to bits and tried to like pump them up, and they're just dull dog shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, right? You know anyway. that feeling, Brian? You know what I'm talking about. Where you're in the middle of a bit, and you're really working it, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't even get out of this bit. Yeah. It's usually the dolphin one when people start going, <laughs> oh, like, like women <laughs> get disgusted about it or something. Yeah. Or not the dolphin one. I'm sorry, the stripper one. Oh, that's even more, yeah. yeah. Well, what are they going to do? Every, it's not for everybody. There. Some people like bluegrass. And it sucks because that story is like 10 minutes long. It, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Once you start well, when you realize the whole crowd is not that into it, right. you're like, oh, I really should have stopped. Yeah, yeah. Well, I it's... found a way out of it, though, lately. Yeah, that's sometimes an important part of like not doing well with a bit, too, is that it shows other paths. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, also, I like doing it for crowd. I like doing bits for crowds. A mix between either putting on the best show or doing bits that I think this crowd won't like. To see if I can make it work here, you know what I mean? Right, if right. It's a like real right. dark joke, and there's a real conservative crowd. I could do my more conservative jokes, but I'd sort of rather work on this in front of these people, work on this really harsh thing in front of these people. That's why I like going to Australia and Switzerland and Amsterdam, doing shows in other countries. So like, I want to know what parts of these really work in different environments. Wow. You know, and comedy on state has like a, has a Thursday night, like college night, so it's all college students. You know, 250 of them. So it's like, yeah, let me see how they relate to this. Right, right. 
college kids are a different thing, man. Because when you do like colleges, one of the things that you realize like almost immediately yeah. is how little experience a lot of them have in life. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of them are coming from their parents' houses, right. their protected environments of their to home, a dorm. to a dorm with a bunch of savage, hormonally <laughs> charged teenagers just <laughs> sticking things inside their bodies like all day. <laughs> Whether it's needles or dicks or just you're just fucking and doing drugs and getting crazy. I mean, people are getting crazy. You remember how much fucking you did when you were in college? Zero. Oh, oh no, I barely won. You didn't do any fucking? Oh, that's right. You were a, a virgin religiously for religious purposes. Yeah, but then I dropped the religion. I still was just waiting for the right girl. The right girl to love. Kate Hicks. Yeah. Uh, I saw that you added that to your phone, your, uh, your email <laughs> yeah, list, no unless you Kate Hicks. <laughs> yeah. I said, if I, I said, I had to tell her about my new email address. I said, if I haven't talked to you in a long time, we're enemies. Don't take this as a sign. You should get in touch with me again. Unless you're Kate unless Hicks. Unless you're Kate Hicks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know it. where she is now? In Baltimore somewhere. Yeah. She's yeah. doomed. Are you friends with Facebook? No, she won't be friends with me on any She's of those doomed. things. She's doomed. She's doomed. She can't get the orange dick anymore. <laughs> I don't know what She's it is. doomed. That's what it is. She's terrified. Is she the She's one that got away? Crying She's in one Baltimore. Of them, yeah. There's like five that got away. Yeah, Thinking about too. the Ari dick. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I got away every time. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that always got away? I, well, I mean, I definitely got dumped. <laughs> I've definitely been dumped. But when I got dumped, I got away. I realized after you're the one who got away. Like, whoa, I got away. Oh wow, thank God. Yeah, but I was a maniac too. Don't get me wrong; they got away as well. It's not like either one of us wasn't goofy. I love when you can both look back and be like, "Whoa, what the we fuck both got out of that." Yeah, what were we doing? Wow, you got to be careful though. I'm so wrong for you. You're then, so wrong for me. Yeah, right. You get into that situation where you think, you know, like, "Wow, maybe we were meant together." Like now we've gone through all our bullshit and. I tried to do that once. Yeah? Yeah, with a... Oh, right, because you're just comfortable. A girl from not... when I was a teenager. We met when I was 25, and we went on a date in New York and had a good time and went back and got a little that in there. Funky, and I was funky. like, wow, maybe she's the one. Holy shit. Maybe she's the one, yeah. No, no it didn't. It I did that so much. Two days, it was a wreck. Maybe she's the one. You start thinking like, well, look around. That's another thing. Like, after when, one date, I'm like, relax. When you're young and single and you try to like it. hang out for a weekend with someone that you barely know, yeah. and like a day in where you're like, will you shut the fuck up? <laughs> Up? Like, what kind of craziness are you talking? And you realize, like, what kind of nonsense people talk amongst their friends. And then you're Shut like, up. stuck in the middle of it. Yeah. People just, yeah. just squawking at you. Ari, have you met anyone off of Tinder yet? One girl in Melbourne I hooked up with. You're nice. not supposed to tell that fucking kiss and tell cocksucker. What? Oh, is Melbourne Dude, gonna know? There's not that many people. They know who fucked Ari in Melbourne. Um, be, no, be it's nice. weird. You know why I like Tinder more than anything? More than because I went on one date in New York and we were like made out and that was it. And then another Whoa. date, we didn't do anything. Whoa. But like, it's nice to be able to reject girls that are kind of out of your league. Just to be like, nah, <laughs> you're just an eight. No thanks. Whoa. Yeah, when you're saying yes or no to all these girls and they're putting their best pictures up, you feel like your line has gone up. Wow. Because you're like, why would I take this seven and a half when I, could t- I just took two nines? Wow. And you don't have to get to match with any of them. What are we doing to humans? Are we devaluing them? We're I breaking don't them know. Down to numbers on, a, on a, an iPhone app. Is I that don't really know, or if I don't know if it's setting us free. Hmm. Well, I think from it's these definitely societal norms that aren't really us. Definitely setting a lot of people free from the uh, the difficulty in getting laid. I saw two hippos fucking in the in the in the zoo. Me and Simone and Pete C. That has went. nothing to do with Tinder. They yeah, did not meet on Tinder. It was the base level of it. It's like that old joke you had with the uh, with the lions. Tigers. No, like no, like oh, yeah. I wonder if my pilot is going. Yeah. None of that. Just fucking. Yeah. That's what Tinder is. That's base. Like that. You like me. I like you. We like each other's looks. Let's do this. Well, I think one of the things that's kept people from being more sexually liberated is that people cling when there's a shortage. Yeah. And when it's difficult to get sex. People cling to each other. Yeah. When it's difficult to find partners, difficult to find lovers, and you know people that you enjoy being with, it's hard to meet people. When you find people, they get together and they get married real early. But when people get older, instead of playing musical chairs, just grabbing onto the first chair and hanging on, and you get us something like a Tinder or one of those little dating Opens websites the, the, or the books, yeah, you can just meet a bunch of new people and then find who you actually like, and then you realize they're just meeting a bunch of people too, yeah. and everybody's just meeting, and it's We're easy all to, here meet to meet people. It's like yeah. first day at dining hall of the fucking college. Which everyone's hard. hi, how are you? Yeah, and if it becomes not hard to get a date, yeah, that eliminates a lot of the Bobby stress. Bobby Lee said it changed his life. Really? He said because he was the one thing he was worried about most was rejection, a natural oh. fear of it. But this takes that out. They've already said, yeah, I'm interested. Wow. 
Oh, that's interesting. So that's great. a great idea. That's yeah. a great application. I just met this girl yeah. on on Tinder, and she's like, she's like, uh, I told her my name eventually. I was like, oh, my well, online it's Brian Redband, and she goes, that's weird. My last name is Ban. I'm like, what? Oh, oh that's crazy. Man, and man then, yeah, and then, uh, then she uh, she had con- come to the comedy store with Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee met his girl on Tinder, brought this girl with her. And I was like, wait, I remember I was like staring you down the whole time. And then I found a picture on Comedy Store's website uh, of her, of the whole patio that night. Like they took a picture with of the you patio, and, her? and I'm staring right at her and she's staring right at me. It's, it's like, a wow. marriage weird. made in heaven. I'm a psychic. I can tell It'll it's definitely in the work stars. Now. <laughs> Read your tea leaves. Her last name's Ban though. Isn't that weird? Crazy. Did you do it with her? No, I haven't even met her yet. It's Shari, weird. Sorry, come on, Sorry. man. How dare Sorry. you? Sorry. How dare you? It's hard for me to meet people off Tinder because it's, it's like... It's a very weird situation. Even once you said the first yeah. move, it's like, hi, <laughs> yeah. um, so we might want to touch each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gets tricky. It gets real tricky. You got to think about what you're doing. You're getting together. It gets real tricky when you show stranger. up and you're like, there were about 30 pounds that weren't represented in those right. photos. What, what well, do you my do fit, then? Yeah, my what? Fit. what do you do then? You just enjoy the date and then you get at some point you're like, you know what? I don't give shit anymore. You're looking sexy. Whoa! <laughs> Ari Shafir. That's why you got to do some research before you go. You take a screenshot of it, cut out the picture, upload it to Google Image Search, and it'll show you her Facebook page. Oh, oh my God, God, Brian. <laughs> Too crafty. Wow. Too crafty. Jesus. Like, I just found out this girl that I met, uh, she has a podcast on a uh, other podcast network. I'm not, I don't know if I should tell her or not because we've been talking back and forth. Why and I was like, it, it's, uh, what the fuck? Is something wrong with her having a podcast? Yeah, I just don't like the network. Oh. So what? <laughs> so what? Slumber party with Allie and Georgie. Let all that shit go. Don't don't tell people <laughs> online who it is, you fucking knucklehead. <laughs> you want to ruin your life already? It's either Allie or Georgie. So you got to learn how to keep secrets, you fuck. <laughs> I'm not going to probably never meet this girl. Oh, but you might. You might. You might become besties. You might become besties. Yeah, man. You know, I, I, I really resent that idea that uh, p- what? other uh, podcasters have to uh, be, uh, we have to be against each other. We have to no, we're well, all the same team. It's just against them. Yeah. Not, a, not even talking about your situation, but when uh, the Stitcher Awards came out, uh, yeah. we, we won best overall podcast. Congratulations. Dun, 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 very happy. But what I was shocked by was like one of the other fucking podcasts. I'm, I've never even heard of them. It might be the nicest guys ever. But their uh, their sound guy or something like, instigated some fucking hate campaign against us. Like really? Yeah, to tweet me and say a bunch of mean shit to me. It was like a swarm of it. You know, I was like, wow, this is hilarious. Like, uh, like, guess what? Guess you know, you can you can light whatever podcast you want. Like, you don't have to be mean to the people that other people like. Yeah. Like, who gives a shit? It's like your podcast. Thing. Your podcast can't be that good if that's the way you think. If you really think that way, your podcast has got to be filled with some nonsense. Like when David Cross hated Larry the Cable Guy and David Cross's stand-up was garbage? Yeah, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> well that was a ridiculous thing. Like, like, come on, man. You know what he's doing. He's doing a character. Like The no. idea that this character it's is for like... for yokels. What do you care? It's ruining the fabric of society because No, it's, it's not. That racist. fabric was already done. Well, racist. Yeah, he's, that's that was the uh, argument that uh, Larry the Cable Guy's racist. Really? Yeah, that was a big part of it. This xenophobic fear of foreigners, you know, mm-hmm. towelhead talk, you know, that kind of shit. Yeah. I don't know, man. There's all this shit to be worried about in this world, you know. That that weird thing where people get mad at other people for being successful, or get mad at other people for winning an award, or get mad at other people for pr- producing yeah, something. Yeah, I said if you, you want to if you want to tell a com- you want to piss a comic off oddly, tell him he's your second favorite comic. <laughs> <laughs> people get angry. I'm like, it's still really good. Of all the comedians, uh, you're number two. That's, that's awesome. Hilarious. And they get like, Whoa, who do you like better? Yeah, <laughs> that's so that's, mad. That's so true. Yeah. Well, th- we're all fucked up in some way, you know, or at least we come into it fucked up, and hopefully we balance out somewhere along the trip. You but- want to piss off a girl? Here's what you do: you say, you call her and say, "Close your eyes and come outside right now," and then watch how disappointed they'll get, because women think they just deserve free things, and they'll just assume you got them a present. That's not nice. <laughs> no, it's not fear. Nice. These are terrible ideas. You got to vet these out with me. Call me up next time you think about doing something like that. I go, what are you going to do? What, what's the benefit of that? Are you just going to laugh? Ha ha. You get <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you get nothing but dick. You want some dick? You don't? Tough. Somebody else does. Look at Tinder. Look at my phone. Fuck you. I'm free. I'm free. Tinder's weird. Every high schooler has one. So free. What's that? Every high schooler has one. A tin- Tinder? Mm-hmm. I'm sure they do. They're Every going, college person they're has on, one. They're on a goddamn rampage. Kids today are fucking with a, a, an ease a and a pace. Reckless abandon. 
that we've never experienced before. That's why it's good that they have that uh, HPV vaccination. It's very oh, yeah. important. Yeah. They can shoot that in them, and then they can shoot loads in each other and not worry oh, about yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Anyone under 26, right? Something like that? Anybody young uh, that's going to have sex should get that vaccine. Oh, yeah. That shit's bad, that HPV. But that vaccine, apparently, uh, with some folks, has had uh, given them adverse reactions. There's a bunch of... Uh, like what? I don't know. Some people, you know, it's like any other medication. Some people just don't know. They just get sick. Wow. Some people get sick from it. These uh, vaccinations are tricky. You know, Chandra's um, dad got uh, Lyme disease. Mr. From, Keys? Yeah, from a um, from a, a lot. They they had a vaccination for Lyme disease, but for a small percentage of the population that had a particular gene set up, they would get Lyme disease from the vaccination. Wow, it's fucked up. The poor guy got Lyme disease from a vaccination for Lyme disease. It wasn't a lot of people that got that, but it was enough that they pulled it from the market. Whoa, God. Do you see what's going on in Venezuela right now? Yep. It's crazy riots. Crazy riots. It's happening all over the world. Millions of people on the street protesting against their government. All over the world. Mm Mm-hmm. Put up some of the pictures. The Ukraine also. What are your people doing, Ari? So Venezuela's not his people. people. (laughs) How dare you? Well, they're just tired of this uh, fucking... Really shitty setup that they yeah. have in a lot of these countries. Quit cheating us wrong. Do what we uh, want for once. Yeah. You you actually don't own us. You don't have power over us. We allow you. We elect you to positions of control. Elect you. You don't you don't tell us what to do. We tell you that you have power to do things. But the system's so corrupt though, it's like that you can't do you apply any uh-huh. leaders in there, it'll always be corrupted. Not everyone, man, but most. The system will get matched. I think well also I think people until today, until this year. People have been, I mean, until, uh, you know, this this age, I should say, mm-hmm. the age of the Internet. People have been able to get away with shit and not get in trouble with it and not have the word spread across the country, like, instantaneously. Yeah, with Ronald Reagan, I have no recollection of that. This is live video of it right now. It's turned this into fire. God. It's live cops video? versus... Uh, cops versus citizens. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is terrifying. This is a movie, man. Shots going off. That, that light. But oh, yeah. you know what? Otherwise... Oh. Wow, look at this shit. This is crazy. This is live. That's live right now. Venezuela yeah. is a fucking, they're rioting. <laughs> they are turning against our government. Imagine if you were living in Venezuela right now, this is the apocalypse. They have regular Everything's cars. Everything's on fire. Guys, this is Chicago in 20 years. Everything's on fire and guns are going off. And this is the government trying to keep control of its citizens. Because they're, they're, they're protesting and said, no, no, pro-. they outlaw protests. Yeah. That's the first yeah. thing they do, outlaw protests. Yeah, you can't outlaw protests, you fucks. And they start getting violent because they just want to say, don't do this. Yeah, well, they're, you know, they're, they're living under a totalitarian dictatorship. They're blocking Twitter. If you, if you uh, post pictures on Twitter, they're blocking a lot of them. Yeah. Whoa, shit. It's terrifying shit, oh. man. Whoa. And you know what? All these monarchs and all these kings and all these people that run countries are terrified yeah. of this kind of shit happening. All these prime ministers or whatever their title is. People oh. in positions of power. Call them whatever Jesus. the fuck you want. Why did you see that? All Something. these people are terrified of losing this. They're terrified of losing their ability control. to control these people. And they, they get used to that f- feeling of power. They feel like they deserve it. The same way we were talking about earlier, like ridiculous celebrities think that everyone is supposed to kiss their ass. Because they don't look at themselves. These people don't look at themselves either. They just dominate these people. I like the people who support America going into like Syria or something like that. And they're like, well, we got to do something. And my thought is, if there were dirty dishes in the dish in the sink, you don't send a spastic toddler in there to wash it because they'll smash a bunch of dishes. And you're like, well, we can't just leave the dishes dirty. And like, well, we got to send in somebody. Sure. But like that toddler's the wrong guy to send in. America's proven to have just no, there's no spread one else. Spread death. But who else would you send in if you're going to get but, rid but of no, a dictatorship? But no, we're clearly not the ones. We well, just spread death to every country we go into. Yeah, but if you want to, okay, look, I'm not, I don't buy the, the, the what's going on in Syria. I don't buy us that we need to invade Syria. I think it's a very complicated, yeah. gigantic mess. But if you're going to say that someone needed to invade Syria, well, who I'll tell the you, fuck would it be except us? No, we're the we've only, only real superpower in the world. But we've only made more suffering and death to we're, everywhere else we've gone. We're getting better at it, Ari. <laughs> okay? It takes like a joke. It takes a lot of practice. You got to keep dominating worlds for a long time before you get it right to the point you can be really nice while you're doing it. I'm you in a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Ari Shafir on Twitter. A-R-I-S-H-A-F-F-I-R. Follow him and respect. Yeah. He will also be at the Ice House tomorrow night at 10.30 p.m. along with Brian Redband, Tony Hinchcliffe, Duncan Trussell, and Justin Martindale. Boom, shalak, lock, boom. And Zaney's in Chicago this weekend. Yeah, go there to Chicago this weekend. Ari will be warming up for Zaney's. And Zaney's is a warm-up for... 
Oh, the Verizon Theater in Dallas, Texas on oh, yeah. March 14th. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have so one. much fun. Oh, what are you doing on April 3rd? What are you doing April 3rd? I'm in Tempe with Diaz. Boom, son. I'm in Miami, bitch. Oh. Oh, let me just say, I would reject that anyway. I hate Miami. <laughs> How dare you? One of you. the worst cities. How dare you? They're wonderful Ugh. people. And you're, Bomb them. You creep. They're your folks. Yeah, and then them. Cubans and Jews just fucking with abandon on uh-huh. Tinder. Ah, ah, chaos Arabs. fucking. <laughs> just chaos fucking. Um, 418, I'm in Orlando, Florida with Joey Coco Diaz. And then 425 in Baltimore, Maryland. Also with the master, Joe Diaz. All right, so we will see you guys tomorrow with Campbell McLaren. Campbell McLaren is the man who hired me for the very first UFC uh, that I did, which was UFC 12 in Dothan, Alabama in 1997. And uh, he was there from the very beginning. He'll tell some great UFC stories. And he's also got some new uh, MMA league that he's putting together. He's going to talk to us about that. Uh, thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to naturebox.com. Good food. Yeah, it's good. It's yummy. And they're sending me some gluten-free shit this week. Son. Oh. Get a handle on your hunger and your health. Go to naturebox.com slash Rogan. That's naturebox.com slash Rogan. Try it now. For your first order, 50% off by going to naturebox.com slash Rogan. Go there. Enjoy the shit out of it, you dirty freak. Hey, I'm having a 420 show at the Comedy Store. Store 20. Oh, Jesus Louise. Store 20 at 4 o'clock. The Comedy Store 420 show at 420. Ari Shafir, I doubt weed will be involved in that (laughs) show. Wink, wink. But if you do get yourself in some trouble and you need legal help, LegalZoom is not the place to go for for that. But it's a place to go to for a lot of other legal shit. LegalZoom.com. Use the code word Rogan in the referral box at checkout for more savings. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but they can connect you with a third-party attorney and provide you with self-help services. We're also brought to you by Onnit.com. O-N-N-I-T. Use the code word Rogan. Save 10% off any and all supplements. Much respect, you dirty bitches. We'll see you tomorrow.